This episode brought to you by I'm getting too old for this shit laxatives. And they just like you to know that the last poop is the best poop. It's a lethal poop. Hey everybody, we're watching Lethal Weapon and you are listening to Miscast Commentary. You're listening to Miscast Commentary. Where two guys have seen way too many movies and have way too much time on their hands. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Now here's your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Hey everybody, welcome to Miscast Commentary. I'm Joe Finley. I'm Todd Tebow, the Sailor Murray. And we are actually back in the same room, but oh in God. a socially distanced format. He's across the room from not me. Not your cat, uh, though. No, not the cat. She is in you. <laughs> this uh, is so great. But we are back together. I'm just so like lounging actually... in a chair. This is how you yeah. do movie commentary. So, like you see like these schlubs sitting on like a stool, <laughs> you know, and some assholes on the other end of the glass being like, say your lines. You say your lines. You. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> oh, man. No, this is exciting. I am happy to be uh, Me too. back together. Me too. Cheers. And uh, what do you say? Let's get this turkey going Let's by pressing it. play. Oh, I almost did it with my mouse. Now. All right. We're going to hear what we Here can. we go. I haven't seen this movie in forever. Oh. Okay, you know, I was saying... Oh, I'm it, sorry, I've got to double check this. i got to play CC. What the bloody I know. shit? Sorry. Plus play. <laughs> it's, this is almost like they, uh, they like, ripped off the... Um, it's like the Superman font, but only when it stops. It's very Richard You know what Donner, I mean? Like, yes. woo, how it comes in. No, I agree. And he, he was by Superman. Yes, he was. This is oh, Richard that makes Donner. Sense. If you, you're going to rip off credits, you can rip off your own credits. I mean, come on. Yeah, if, if anyone has a right. Wouldn't it have been great if American Graffiti was Star Wars? <laughs> or the other way around, Star Wars was all, like, old-timey. Oh, that'd be totally wicked. I was, uh, we were watching the movie in silent mode there for a second mm -hmm. and i was trying to think of what the warner brothers you know when the logo comes up what's the music and they remember now it's usually this where they yeah. kind of have the music coming over it yeah a lot of cool people in this movie so we already said richard donner directed this we've talked about him a couple of times in our like we just saw one of his movies universe. uh yeah so we just did assassins which is what he re most recently did uh but obviously he did goonies which we did superman which we mentioned the omen scrooged uh maverick conspiracy theory lots of uh pretty much as much uh Mel Gibson, as you can get your hands on. Uh, he also produced Lady Hawk and uh, Lost Boys. Oh, Free Lady Willy. Hawk's awesome. Uh, yeah, Free Willy, Tales from the Crypt, uh, X-Men, the movie, uh, like the live action movie, and Any Given Sunday. Did you see, see it just said that the main theme is from Eric Clapton? Oh, really? Yeah. That actually makes sense when you listen to the... It was Eric Clapton and somebody else. Trent Reznor. Yeah, that's now. I can't believe that man, eh? I know he is doing some good. I'm, I'm. It surprises me. I know he's he's scored a lot of movies. Oh yeah. I think the first one that I know was Into the Wild. No, that was Eddie Vedder. I think. Oh, you're right. You're right. I think his first one was a uh, uh, maybe The Social Network or something. Yeah, he works with David Fincher a lot. Yeah, they hit that. This is how I spend every up. night now, but because of the pandemic, <laughs> just laying in. A oh, weird. <laughs> I got my Lee press on nails on. I'm just kind of yeah. weirding out. <laughs> Giggling at nothing. <laughs> I that's, remember that. <laughs> that's the length of fingernails that like you when you're having a oh. dream and the person's going to become Freddy. That's always the person. It's the person with the really long fingernails she, becomes Freddy. Like if you got all those Coke nails, why use a straw? Yeah, I know. I right? mean, just scoop it up with your big old nail, girl. Well, she probably like, I'm growing these nails out for when the straw gives out. And it always seems like they're just so reckless with their cocaine. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't wait to do it. I'm going to spill it all the fuck over the place. Are you think you'd leave? <laughs> like, she knocked the whole jar over. I know. Oh, she's like, woo! 
Oh, she's got a lot of freckles. Oh, I do this all the time. Those are extra nipples. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna fall out. Oh my god, what I p- tortured my poor buddy. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I know I can't remember where we were, and uh, I was loaded. Yeah. And we were walking home and I just, he was on his bicycle. He should have just rode off because I was just awful. I was doing like this, like I'm on a bridge and I'm like, I'm dropping over. Like, and I'm like hanging oh, over Jesus. this and he's like, you fucking stupid. He's like Bulgarians. He's like, fucking <laughs> stop being stupid. Bub. <laughs> you dumb dummy. <laughs> this is, see, okay. This is how you start a movie. Mm-hmm. With a Either building. an explosion wow. or a building. Yes. Or an exploding building. Yes. It's like you either better have nudity, I don't care what it is, or an explosion. Mm-hmm. It's like Stuart Little, take notes. I'll give you an interesting little Woo! teaser for what our next movie is going to be. Is she trying to make it to the pool? Yeah. Our next movie is uh, has a nude Ooh. scene that is what was listed as Mr. Skin's number one all-time nude scene. No, oh, I know what it is, yeah. You, you know, yeah, yep. I would hope you know what it I'm is. I'm Mr. Skin. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. You, dude. You sort of are. <laughs> I got to grab my phone for uh, purposes of trivia. I am Mr. Skin. We're all Mr. Skin in the end. Everybody loves to see nudity. Come on. This is what I'm worried about in this new world order now, though. What's that? Like the nudity. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know I can go to Tubi and watch, you know. See, oh, here. See, now we got Danny Glover naked see. in the tub. This is all over the place, this movie. See? They gave him a very long beard here. I know. I, I don't remember him having the beard. I knew it like he had his beard, but I didn't think it was like a scraggly mess. This is the hit. I, I guarantee you he's pretending that this is a surprise, but he's yeah. like, bring all the children while I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> so our son can see that yeah. I have the biggest dick in the world. Maybe, maybe Q was right. And the liberals and Hollywood are just nothing but a bunch of pedophiles. Oh, that's definitely true. Oh. Absolutely. The truth. <sighs> Ask what's his name? The director of the X-Men movies. Yes. Uh, he'll point you in the right direction. <laughs> Let me tell you, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you This is kind of strange, though, that, like, he's in the... T- I think that when they came in, though, he threw a face cloth over yeah. the front of, you know, over his genitals. Can we have just a little bit more in the way of uh, um, bubbles, at least? I know, because I think it's so weird. Like, let's go surprise your father in the tub. Yeah. You know, can you wait till he comes out of the tub? Nope, hard disagree. But I mean, the family ser- seriously has this like packed with like dad can never be in the bathroom. Yeah, never let that man. He loves it. It's his yeah. favorite. Yeah. Well, that's like the um, because they do and what Leth- Lethal Weapon Two, I think it is. It's the toilet. He's the yes. bomb on the toilet. Yeah, he's can't and even the, take. He's the like, first time I ever yeah. take shit. And then National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon One had uh, where he busts in and he's on the toilet. He's like, "What's wrong?" He's like, "Nothing." Came to shit. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, so the girls' night—that's my night, and this is my morning. <laughs> I wake up. Yeah. I went to bed on the couch. Yeah. I wake up in my bed smoking. Yeah. This was supposed to be Shane Black had originally written a much darker script. And the, his first, his opening scene was going to be him in a bar. Oh, he's got oh, buns. Oh, yeah. Um, it was going to be him in a bar and uh, just drinking and drinking. And then two guys come up and start messing with him and he beats the shit out of them. And then the bartender gives him a free bottle to never come back. <laughs> when you can finish the parking lot and never come back. Look mm-hmm. at this young buttock. Mel Gibson. Just straight up hot sex before you knew about his real rage issues. Oh, man. Not his funny, rage fake, it. lethal weapon rage <laughs> issues. Yeah. You thought he was acting? Oh, he's watching The Feud. The top four answers on the board. Oh, no, Which Richard Feud Dawson. is that? Is that, that Richard, Richard Dawson? Dawson? Yeah. Yeah, he was too young for Ray Combs. Hey, it's that girl who's in everything. <laughs> well, she was in like, oh, no, uh, I don't think that is her. I just saw, I just saw a short with that haircut. Got that right. I paid for that goddamn bacon, kids. Oh, right. They're redoing the house. Yeah. Fuck, I haven't had real bacon in forever, man. No, that's okay. I oh. have. I've had plenty for you. Oh, that bitch just dropped an egg. <laughs> so really interesting thing. So that's Darlene Love who plays Trish. She's actually mostly a singer. Um, And I started looking through some of the things. She was lead vocalist for The Blossoms. And they were mostly, Her. yeah. And uh, w- one of the big albums that they were known for was their Christmas album. And so she'd like, um, 
a lot of movies use their stuff. So like when you hear the female version of rocking around the Christmas tree, it's her singing. Oh, no way. And if you hear um, Christmas, play, baby, please come home. Right. You know, like Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Da, da, da. See, you got it. It took me. I had to go through like about like three quarters of the song. And Carrie's like, oh, OK, I remember that. There we go. Don't take us down, DMCA. Uh, too bad I got to do the whole thing. So, so that's her. <clears throat> but this is the one that blew me the way, away the most. She's the singer of the Christmas time for the Jews sketch on SNL. The old, <laughs> do you remember the Saturday TV fun, uh, fun house? Yeah. Saturday the TV Rob, fun house. Yeah. So, uh, Robert Smigel did one. It was called Christmas time for the Jews, but it had the, <laughs> it had the, um, California raisin style, like animation. Right. And it was all about how like the, the Jews take over on Christmas and stuff like that. <laughs> right. But she's the singer of that. Oh, no way. And then there's also a song she was saying called today. I met the boy I'm going to marry. It's featured in six, 16 candles and father of the bride no no way so yeah i love that's a good that, that's good uh trivia right there that's thank good, you very that's, much. A, that's a cool one hey can i tell you a little secret and some more spoiler for next week we haven't heard the last from her Ooh, i like that so yeah. well, okay we're gonna i guess what is this uh, they're gonna be uh okay you must be at the the, the the spot where they found the chick on top of the car yeah no this is when you find out he has he only does nothing cases it's like rich ladies, dogs. Is that vanity? Oh my god, I wish. Uh-huh. The, uh, I, the audio is out of sync. Oh from yeah, the it was thing. just like like Mark McGrath. But... There's the mouth uh, is off. <laughs> That's a, probably the first time he's ever been called somebody considered handsome. You fucking hilarious. That's funny. The okay, so thing. what? I guess what they're gonna be uh, looking into this cocaine. Yeah. Riggs is gonna walk over to it, do a big line, and be like, "This isn't cocaine. This is." We gotta yeah. get this off the streets. Yeah. Then he's talking to his girlfriend on the phone. I hope you get choked by some. And he looks over at Danny Glover and he's like, <laughs> "We'll finish this talk later." Yeah, exactly. Right. How bum- how bummed were you when like his like when he just kind of like flamed out because he had his his jail fit where his like yeah. last thing, and then where he started going like the went Jews off on the cops. Yeah. And, like, and it was that, and then that call like back to back in such like quick succession, and it just changed everything. Because I love like I mean I love Mel Gibson. Oh, uh, he was so like Man, people say all types of crazy shit when you get you know what I yeah. mean. He's a rage a hall. Yeah, but so like, you just say crazy shit when you get all raged up. Mm. I don't think he's really a racist. I know, but like you that. know what? I've as mad as I've ever gotten, I've never started thinking the N word. Right. Like I think that's the difference. It's that stuff. Is like he can be a decent person. That is true, though. It's yeah. not like it, oops, it just accidentally, you know what I mean? Yeah. Went off for 15 minutes on, <laughs> yeah, exactly. know, like whatever type of, uh, yeah. Ooh, like, I love that sexy. I, it's so early nights. It's too sexy for this movie, though. Like, this should be like, like oh, look at like this big smile. He's like, yeah. Like, this, should oh, be, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's doing the, he uh, is too. It's the, yeah, he's doing a drug deal thing. Okay, now one of the da- one of the guys here, I can't remember which one. I think it's the one who's standing up right now. His name, his real name is John Kiedis. That's Anthony Kiedis's father. No way, which one? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the one with the uh, pla- like the red plaid. No the way. The one shaking his head right now. I'm pretty sure that's... The- Dude, yeah. when I go to buy like five, six, seven kilos of cocaine, I go to the Christmas tree. Uh, place because yeah. you know they got it well what's weird is it's a seasonal place to buy drugs yes so you could keep well, they probably also do fireworks in july it's and... there i think what are they in la uh yes you want to buy a tree you want a white christmas buy a kilo of cocaine with it dude you're a fu- between that and you're brought to you by which was 100 <laughs> percent your idea you were a fucking genius today and you are gonna carry me through this whole goddamn thing yeah it's definitely that you look at that guy there's no there's no anthony Kiedis in that guy there's Anthony Kiedis and the guy and the scraggly guy in the back there. Whoa. hundred thousand dollars. This reminds me of kind of like the beginning part of uh, Beverly Hills Cop mm-hmm. where he's doing the deal and then the truck yeah. takes off. Well, it's all of Is the- that Richard Donner? No, uh, it's, it's Martin Brest. Oh, uh, which. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot of th- I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that are connecting to other things that I don't want to talk about right now. That poor guy. I think the- that dude in the plot is his dad. It's got of the three. It has to be him. There's no way it's not him. 
Like I looked up, I know for a fact that one of these guys is and is Anthony Keys's dad, but just based on looking that up, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder how much, uh, how many movies he was in. Like, is this the only one? I didn't look him up because I found this information out kind of last minute. Whoa! Oof! Got oh, that yeah, yeah. Buck shot. See this ball, oh, the old roll and shoot. That Fuck yeah. That has to be the least accurate way to shoot ever. <laughs> no way. Like that's another thing. Like they talk about, like when you know when you hold the gun sideways and you're like blocka blocka. Like they're like anybody who's good at firing a firearm would tell you you don't you know you can't do that. Yeah, well, when they say to you like when you got the guy with the gun sideways, yeah, they're like there's no, no yeah. you're not you're you're not gonna hit you won't even hit him by accident. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. He doesn't care. He's like, blow my brains mm-hmm. and I don't care. You know what I, I find, too? I don't dislike any of the lethal weapons. I don't either. I think I think four like I don't think four is just as good as one, but I think that four has a ton of value to it. It's oh, like, yeah. Is they that the one Jet Li? Yes. I like how like all of them have to fight Jet Li because there's yeah. no way. Yeah, that's I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And they grew with like themselves like the the movies grew with them yeah like he gets a little more less intense he kind of learns from mm-hmm. from uh, murtaugh how to yeah. and he's be fe- a human again and he's feeling a little and he's feeling older and that and he can trust chris rock coming in as the new hot young and joe, well, joe pesci is, uh, is the next the next ones yeah god what would you do for a new one i mean you what, what do you think he's pulling down like he spends all of his like money on the booze and the smoke so like he's got to live in this yeah I think he's just happy because he's on the beach, right? So I think it's just a matter of like, hey, how, how does it get any better than this? It doesn't. I don't need, I don't need any more space than this, and I'm right on I the know, beach. I know, it looks pretty good to me. It looks like a lot of room. Yeah. That's all you need. I need, to, oh, I need space geez, to cook. Oh, jeez, yep. This is, this is it. They this get, is my next night after I run out of all that cocaine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, where did it go? Oh, my phone's about to die. We're going back to this for trivia. Oh, uh, he's got the gun in his hand, the picture. Yeah, this is a scene. Actually, this is the scene <clears throat> that got him the role of Hamlet. Oh, no way. Yeah. They they said, I saw him do this scene. And he's like, this is to be or not to be in the most intense format. Like, He's such a good actor. He really is. I love his acting. His pain acting is like yeah. the best. Yeah. Like we can put everything. Oh, I we've said that a billion yeah, times. Yeah. Whatever he's hurt, like in oh, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, when it's like shoulders dislo- dislocated. Um, or even when they're hammering his toe is in payback. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, man, the uh, no, you, 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 like he's gonna blow his brains out while he's watching like Looney Tunes. Yeah. Well, so or he's, I think he's watching you? the Three Stooges. Yeah, well, the, oh. he, actually, he loves the Three Stooges so much, he actually produced the biopic of he, the Three Stooges. He did? I didn't know that. But is yeah, that for real? Did. Yep. Oh. He did. He is a vast lover of the Three Stooges. That looks a little bit like Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah, it looks like Catherine Hahn mixed with Jennifer Coolidge. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, which way is he going to go? In the mouth? Yeah. Up the nose? Oh, he's, gonna he's going to He's going right between the, the eyes. Gun. Yep. So, um, because they thought that, uh, Shane Black's, uh, thing was too dark. There was also, I guess, in his original script, um, Danny Glover's backstory was he was in Vietnam and he, ac- and he, uh, he accidentally killed a guy during training. Like he beat, a, he beat like another, uh, Oh, this is like the story death. of, this is the, right. the Shane Black backstory and stuff like that. So they hired Jeffrey Bohm to rewrite the movie, like to just add some, like kind of what we know as like the classic banter and humor that comes with these and stuff like that. Right. But, um, what else to hear? I'm just trying to what find a chicken shit. Yeah. Can't even blow your own fucking brains out like right. a man. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, so Jeffrey <clears throat> Bo- uh, bone, uh, he direct or he wrote in Jones, the last crusade, uh, dead zone, inner space, the lost boys, funny farm. And he's the creator of the adventures of Briscoe County jr. <gasps> I knew you'd like that. And what a good acting scene, eh? Oh, it's so good. So good. But um so they they brought him in to write or to rewrite a lot of the movie. Like the story as far as like the ebb and flow of the the storyline is essentially the same, but uh he just kind of like added some st- 
you know, some stuff in to make the movie a little more enjoyable. Right. And uh, they liked what he did so much that he ended up, he rewrote Lethal Weapon 2, which Shane Black had already written. Ah. And they, again, they're like, what are you doing? They killed off Riggs and uh, like all this stuff. So they brought him in to just completely rewrite that script. And then he also wrote Lethal Weapon 3. No shit. So, yeah. That woman doesn't look like she should be a cop with a nightstick. <laughs> and that looks like Vince McMahon in the back. Oh my god, it totally does. It's Vince Is McMahon. She like, and are they like, man. oh, they're in they're the uh they're the they're the band, they're the uh, yes. a cappella. Oh uh, <clears throat> the one thing I really appreciate too about these movies, everybody in the cast is like they go through the entire thing. It's the same captain, it's the same uh She's um, the head shrinker, right? Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. and she's in all of them. The same. Uh, what's her name again? Um, Mary Ellen Trainer. Uh, she was in Romancing the Sp- the Stone, The Goonies. She's the mom in the Goonies. Oh, that's right. Uh, she's in Monster Squad, Action Jackson, Scrooged, uh, Die Hard, Death Becomes Her, Greedy, uh, and she was married to Robert Zemeckis, which I didn't know. Oh. She's actually in Forrest Gump. In uh, she plays Jenny's babysitter. In a scene, I think it's just a voice or whatever, but they were married at the time. Go in there and yell at him while he's taking yeah. a shit. Yeah. That is the best time to yell at somebody. Oh, yeah, this is the dead time, too. Like, she's trying to, like, she's only there because, like, she's got to be. And they're always like, he's suicide. He's like, come on, he's just a tough guy. Yeah. Well, see, now he's down to just mustache. Oh, yeah. So why, shade, why did yeah. he let his hair, his beard grow? Like, is that how fast it grows over the weekend when he's off? Oh, hell yes. He's just like, Ugh. that was just like his five o'clock shadow. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. His voice is just solid. Like, it's, yes. it's velvety, but it's raspy at the same time, like almost like impossibly so. <laughs> Uh, Danny he's Glover, the man. I know. Danny Glover, we haven't had a real chance to cover yet, but he's been in Hill Street Blues, Silverado, The Color Purple, Predator 2, Flight of the Intruder, Pure Luck. And this is when it gets weird. Pure Luck, Angels in the Outfield, Operation Dumbo Drop, Gun Fishing. Then all of a sudden, The Royal Tenenbaums, Saw, Dream Girls, Be Kind Rewind, Sorry to Bother You, Jumanji, The Next Level. He's in a, he's a billion things. I mean, it's friggin' Danny Glover. If you can yeah. get him, you get him. Oh, that guy. What's that guy in? Uh, this. Die Hard. Yes, I believe you're right. He's the other cop, but the, the dude from Goonies. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. You are right. Oh, look where he's just hanging out. Uh-huh. Oh, this is, that's right. Now they're being partnered up for the first time in franchise history. This is the only time we're, a, we're in L.A. a black cop profile the white person. <laughs> it's about goddamn time. <clears throat> I love that so much. I love the he's look like, around. He's, he's like, like what? <clears throat> That's good comedy. Meet your new partner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the guitar riff. <laughs> it's so good. So apparently there was another movie. I don't have it down, but there was another movie that used I'm Too Old for This Shit before this. The what? Uh, the I'm Too Old for This Shit. Oh, right. Movie. But that's okay. We forgive them because it's better in this. Damn right it is. The fact that I didn't remember what the other one was is proof of that. Uh huh. <laughs> like he doesn't know. <laughs> you do know that the war's over. Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks. I, I don't think I don't think he does. So no. And right when he says it to him, he has like a crippling, you know, war. <sighs> you do know the war's over. Sure, I do. <laughs> you know, in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> Let her go. <laughs> when he saw that kid. Yeah. Are they, so they are looking into this cocaine thing well they're going to be yeah they're gonna start yeah because he's coming like he's partnering with him because he's coming from narcotics and he's coming from homicides so i like you know because like you'll you'll never know when you start to make a movie like this that it's gonna be well oh, pardon me like a franchise oh absolutely you know you think like, they get to two and then they're like ah oh, two did well let's go to three and well, then we'll do like and that's why they didn't want to kill him off because they don't <clears throat> they want to at the very least leave it open ended they can decide to end it or they can decide to not end it right I wonder how it would have been if he did if they were went that way because now it seems like maybe they sacrifice well because you know you never know if they sacrifice the story just to keep yeah. it going or not because like you said it was kind of really dark you yeah. know what I mean then yeah 
Well, it's like, I think of like what makes this type of action movie. I don't think if it was dark, I would like this. It's too, like... I think it works because there's some humor. Yeah. And it's when you have the two cops like this, too, it's literally, there's only two ways to go. You have to go kind of buddy, or you end up with friggin', like, true detective, or it's just, like, the most depressing thing in the world. Oh, God, yes. It's like having friggin', like, just, like, pure black tar heroin injected into (laughs) your eyeballs. Let's say you start the day. There's a sexy young girl. Oh, there he is. The ginger dead man. Before his accident. And now, like you said, everybody go watch the ginger dead man. You can see it for free on Tubi. Yeah. Go see. It is amazing. So this movie is before. uh, Okay. Anyways, if you need a real history of uh, the man here, after his balls, his great balls went on fire. Yeah. He went a little nutty. And he went so crazy that uh, a tumor the size of a plum uh, entered his brain. And yes. then when they removed it from his brain, he went in a psychotic breakdown where he murdered a bunch of people. And then uh, by luck, or I don't even know, voodoo maybe, his body, his soul was put into that of a gingerbread man. Yes. And then he murdered people. Yeah. No, basically what happened was his ashes got mixed in with the mixture. Oh, that is what happened in yes. the movie. <laughs> That that is precisely what happens in the movie. And then the kid cuts his finger. Yeah. And she's like, "Let me help you with that, but put your bloody hand over top of the what the the ingredients were mixing together." Yeah. That's pre- yeah. That's well, love. What else That's do you love. need? Right. This dude's in a lot of stuff too. Oh uh, yeah, the guy with the eye there. The guy with the eye. You know what I mean? You no know, two. Well, yeah, that guy's in a lot of shit too, but the guy behind him. Mm-hmm. Oh, this Mr. is just John. a host of bad guys from all across the board. Yeah, so a lot of interesting um, casting and stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, my God. This, he probably did this for real. Just, this is just basic Gary Busey. Apparently, <laughs> Gary Busey, like, this is just what he does, like, alone. But they wanted to hire a big guy to be, and, like, Gary Busey is, like, a like size-wise, apparently, and a pretty intimidating dude. But they were looking at people like Ron Perlman for the role and bunch of other people like that. Um, but I was a lot of interesting stuff in this. Uh, Mel Gibson turned out a chance to be in the fly and the untouchables to do this. Mm, which good, I think good call. It was a good move. Yes. For him. Um, Michael Bean was actually considered for the role of Riggs after uh, Richard Donner saw him in Term- Terminator, but he wanted to do aliens. So you want to do what? Michael Bean wanted to do aliens and stuff. Ah. Like so I wonder what that did. They ask him first. Uh, yeah. I wonder if that would have changed the trajectory of his career. It's interesting because I don't see him being a funny dude. Right. Like, well, I don't think he... Riggs is not funny. He He's funnier. Like, later on. Yeah. Well, even in this one, like, it's just like, he like, his level of crazy in, like, the day-to-day is right. meant to be a little more comedic. A little funnier. So that's Tom <clears throat> Adkins. We've seen him before. He was in uh, Halloween 3. Uh, what else do we got from him? Uh, he was in the fog, Night of the Creeps, Escape. From oh the yeah, the good news is your days are here. The yeah. bad news is they're dead. Yeah. Uh, Richard Donner was apparently offered a chance by uh, Canon Films to direct Superman Four. Oh no way! Because that's when that's when they got the rights to Superman, and he turned it down to do this movie. So good call for him too. Christopher Reeve ended up directing Superman Four, and it ended. Oh up being sweet! The worst. No way. Three was way worse. Although I do That's love, true. Uh, Three was I do off. love uh, Richard Pryor. Though. Hold on, I gotta take him out. I'm getting hot. Oh, watch Todd <clears> Strap. <throat> Woo! Oh, this guy's the man. He is. I think he's like. I just started watching Trancers. Yeah. What a movie. Nice. Guy, oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> you actually did like disconnect the mic briefly too. It's fine now. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> This movie theater's warm. <laughs> there. There we go. Fuck, man. I always wanted to be in one of these, like, you fucking, the, oh, Jesus. He's also staring at a picture what? of Riggs' wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah everybody, everybody wants to kill herself. No, that, um, he is the father of the girl who killed herself. Ah. You owe me. I don't. Why don't you remind me? Uh-oh. It'll be the exact same so flashback is... that Riggs had of Nom. 
It's it's literally the same scene, and it's the same, and it's and it's Riggs' yeah. body, but it's his head up. <laughs> no. <clears throat> he also played an interesting character. Again, a lot of you owe me. Um, in Oz, he played the mayor who was in jail, and you found out he had a, a lot of ties to the Aryan Nation and stuff like that. I hear you, buddy. Just kill. He's like, yeah, I know you're a fucking cop. That's a good line, actually. I don't know why. He's like, oh, you know, I know you're a fucking cop. I yeah, go, of course. Like, what am I, stupid? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we kill worked him. that out. Fucking kill him. Get him. Gotta go. Uh, don't you worry. Look at that crazy white boy over there. He's not letting anybody <laughs> live. Yeah, that one doesn't look like he trusts me. <laughs> So this is something that's interesting. So they served in uh, La Drang Valley uh, in uh, We Were Soldiers, starring um, Mel, Gibson. Mel Gibson. That is the battle that they portray in the movie. No way! Is the La Drang Valley. Maybe that's yeah. where... Uh, hey! She was about to step on my computer. Whatever, you fucking animal abuser. Did you just see that on camera? No, they didn't. Just missed it, eh? Yeah, you come back here, girl. You know where the love is. That hot dog, I love it. Look at they went for a little uh little munch there. <laughs> oh, at least he's gonna finish his hot dog in every goddamn cop movie. It's they like they just throw. or yeah, they just ordered their lunch. They get like five burgers and like, ooh, we gotta go boom out the yeah. fucking window. Which I never understand. Yeah, the guy who's driving can't <laughs> eat, but the guy who's not driving, he's got plenty of I would have been like, Don't uh throw my fucking burgers out. Why? Like, thanks for just throwing my lunch out by it because still eating it later. Yeah, you're totally buying me a new one. Fuck, that, right? I love street meat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait to go to Toronto and get some street yeah. meat. I have. I oh, is that, that going to be a thing now? Like, not well. I guess as long as you're not standing. I don't know. They weren't open. They weren't open last time. I well, well, restaurants post. and everything are open again. Yeah. I'm seeing people on patios and yeah. no. But even when the patios were open, they weren't. Yeah, that must be a weird. You can't uh, like regulate what's going on on the street, right? right. Not even the man can regulate the streets, baby. Regulators. Regulate the steel <laughs> man's probably. We damn good, too. <laughs> Mount up. It was a cold back night. A clear back <laughs> That was so weird. We just we did just... the whole thing. <laughs> you're Warren. You're, you're uh, Nate, Nate dogging up. You just hit the seat he side on the LDG. <laughs> you know, whatever. Oh, they get called out to the old jumper. This one I never got. Why? It's like, it's my life. If I want to jump off a building. Yeah. But I mean, I guess then somebody from the city has got to clean up all this gore. And that's a lot. And you've like ruined the, blah, blah, you've, blah. you've ruined the men, the mental lives of everybody who, has who to watch. saw it. <clears throat> yeah. I wouldn't be the type of person that would be hanging around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's go downtown. Some guy's going to jump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nothing to do. I might yeah, be this, there actually now. This, like I'm yeah. so fucking bored. I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> this is what people do. No, but this is what people do though. If something crazy is happening, everybody stops to watch. There's no like, Ooh, I should, I should mosey on along my way. <laughs> I love this just to prove how crazy he is. Right. Yeah. This is, he's got the same attitude as, um, Dabney Coleman in short time <laughs> where they switch their charts and he wants to die. Because he, he, they accidentally switched their charts in the hospital. So Dabney Coleman thinks he's got like a month to live. So he's trying to die on the job. What a good movie. Yeah, that is, it's a brilliant Yeah, um, and then he never does. He becomes like hero cop because he just, <laughs> <laughs> that's what Riggs is doing. Yeah. Look at those beautiful eyes. He was, he was only, think about this. He was 30 years old when he did this movie. That's it, eh? That's it. He's playing <clears throat> 38. And then um, Danny Glover is 40 so that he's 10 years older in real life than uh mel gibson and he's playing 50 so they aged each of them up all like well they aged oh, him up 10 cool. years yeah. they aged him up eight years oh, i like that they're playing older which yeah. is never usually they're playing younger yeah i like that oh so what's what's even funnier is that um danny glover is only 15 years older than his oldest daughter in this movie <laughs> like in, in legit right, right yeah, yeah. She, she's playing like a 17 year old or something like that but she's actually 25 <laughs> why is he always smoking i mean you know he's suicidal mm -hmm. this is this the long route if he continues putting the gun in his mouth and chickening out, at least cigarettes will get him eventually. Yes, this is the slow burn. Yeah. 
Ooh, he's got his crazy eyes on. Yeah. They really, you know what? It's so funny that they saw enough in him to do something like this, though, because oh, I mean, they hold like, hands. Like, yeah, he grabs his hand. Because in like Mad Max, I mean, you're not getting a lot of acting out of him in oh, any look, of the Mad Max movies, right? Oh yeah, like the the yeah. the stunt guy was so not. Oh yeah, no, and we never that. saw them hook this up, right? No. Well, he was stalling. That's what I was <laughs> guessing. Like they pumped that thing up while he was. Yeah. Because I would just go jump at a different part of the building. Yeah, that would have been. I'm like, oh, you just set them out of thanks. I'm going to just so take five had, feet over. and. Yeah. So he hasn't been looking this whole time. But anyways, like I was saying when you were totally not listening to me, the, uh, uh, the uh, it's amazing that they saw this much in Mel Gibson because, I mean, like, really all you had to work off of was the Mad Max as far as, like, a wide movie. Right. You don't, you don't get a lot of a lot of him in, Mad, like, Mad Max, as far as like his range of acting and stuff, he's kind of a right. You know, that's about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they always said like Tom Hardy was so good in the new one. He was so nuanced and blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah, he moved his eyebrow a little bit. And I knew, I got. I think what's her name? Uh, you got that right. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I yeah. had a bullet, a bullet cake once. He's really opening up here. Nice. Apparently, in that uh, suicide scene too, they put a uh, they put a blank, like a bullet blank in there, like the same kind of thing that killed uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon Lee. Lee yeah. Well, it was the packing that did it, but um, but he, it was like just to add a little bit more tension of the idea of what he's staring into, right, and stuff like that. So they went, they went crazy. He died. He's a CG for the rest of his career. Whoa. I like this scene a lot because this is totally like for somebody to tell you that yeah. is almost like a cry for help. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like, you know, he's not going to yeah. do it. it you know, nobody who's going to do that is going to tell you they're going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Oh, he thought he was going to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. He is. The little twitches and Woo! stuff. Like, he's got a face that just, wor- like, works movies. <laughs> a bullet. And he's, got, he's like, I got another gun, sucker. <laughs> uh, Woo! Fucking shit. That is a uh, stressful way to send, spend your birthday, by the way. This is his birthday. <laughs> oh, that's right. This is his 50th birthday. Fuck me. You can't even take the day off. Mm-hmm. That's that's a cell phone back in these days. Holy fuck. Look at that. Oh, he's talking to the shrink. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's good news. Been very he's a totally helpful. fucking nut job. <laughs> it's going to get you and your whole family killed. So great. See ya. Huzzah. I wonder what the phone bill on that fucker is. is I go- don't know. I think like I think it's like running off a military satellite. Oh my god, he's like right. He can hear her. Yeah, he like he could care less, right? Yeah. He's probably very used to this. He's like sitting at he, you. You see a scene where it's just some woman going, "He's evil, evil." I tell you, and it goes out and it's Christmas dinner and it's his mom and yeah. he's just like cutting up his turkey. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder I like what they are getting made making back then, like on the police force. What do cops make? I don't know. I don't know. Five dollars. Is this like the Period. first time he's had a partner? Uh, at least a while. <laughs> oh, buddy, you're gonna start living again, baby. Yeah. See, they both learn things. Mm-hmm. Riggs, he, Riggs is yeah. Mel. Yes, Riggs learns. To let go of his loss. Yeah. Enjoy today. Except the family he has The now. family, right. Yeah. And Riggs kind of learns to live again. Yeah. Murtaugh doesn't really, like, he. all he learns is that Riggs is an asshole. That is, like, <laughs> because it's like, it's like I, he's, yeah. he's got his life and his family and all that. And then he's like, oh, it's you again. He's got, like, a new kid he's got to take care of. He's a like a big the, suicidal, drunken, smoking kid. He's like the, yeah, he's like the wacky neighbor who's just, like, who who may get him killed. I really, you know what, I should have told you to get that clip 
of him yelling at Joe Astorhaus just to play it during this. Oh my god, it's so oh, amazing. Who wants some cake? That's funny. But, uh, it was something at Huckabee's. He's like, where's the goddamn script for something, something Huckabee's? I heart Huckabee's? Yeah, or is it, but I don't know if he says I heart Huckabee's. Uh, he says something Huckabee's. Oh, interesting. Which I thought maybe he was on tap to direct it before. Oh, who knows? Uh, Buddy got it. That's a good movie, actually, I heart Huckabee. Yeah, it was good. He really hearted those Huckabee's. <laughs> it was also. He sure um, did. It was the prequel to uh, Bob Hart's Abishola. Ooh, I just saw him in a commercial for one of those pills. You know what I mean? Just like, I take this pill. Yeah, and it was like, oh, the really? weird. I was like, this guy? It was, like I was Billy like, this the guy that left, uh, uh, what's her name, Melissa McCarthy for uh, Abishola? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Melissa McCarthy left him. I, I think she was stuck in a rough contract because she got really famous and they did yep. three more years of that show. And I just pictured her going home every night going, for the love of God, I could be making $20 million right now, but instead I'm doing a Chuck Lorre joint. I <laughs> a Chuck Lorre joint. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, where are, we, where are we here? Up in the hills? Yeah, it looks like it. Actually, you know what's really funny is I recognize these places mostly when... Um, you see uh, when I play like Grand Theft Auto five mm. or something like that. And you're driving up through these things and then you'll see that kind of scene or where they're driving. I'm like, Oh, I know where they're at. I was like, if you just turn left up here, that's where I kill the drug dealer. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, oh God. Yeah. It's gotta be, we need a buddy cop movie, bro. Yeah. Before we're too old, before well, we get too old for this shit. Hey, can I tell you a little something? <clears throat> you, I, I, both of us are older than both uh, of them. Yeah. Well, both of us are older than Mel Gibson and you are, are uh, Danny Glover's age. I'm pushing Danny Glover here. Yeah. He, Mel Gibson does look older. Yeah. No, he does look older than that for sure. He's weathered. So what's the, the problem if I'm the age. same age as Danny Glover? What are you saying? I'm saying by the time we get something out, you'll be older than Danny Glover and it's too late. Not now though. Then no, not now. I'll be older than Danny Glover. Then yes, that's awful. How dare you insult me like that? Yeah. Oh fuck. And just a little uh, thing. White does crack. (laughs) (laughs) So we're never getting away with it. Well, it's got a rhyme. Yeah. White ain't right. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. (laughs) I I had it on the ready. He's like, we just killed your boyfriend ladies. Now you're ours. Uh, hey, this is like, oh, it must be in this scene then. Because this is going to be the second scene where somebody goes through the liner of the pool. Mm-hmm. It, it, is it this movie? We'll find it later. Yeah. I don't know if they fall out the window of the apartment building. Is that in part two? I think that's in part two. Because, yeah, it's like he go, they go out of a building in that one. Yeah. Well, at first I thought that this was uh, that jumping from the roof scene was that. But then I remembered there's no pool around. Like, I was like, oh, no, there's no pool down there. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is the pad one. <laughs> he's like, don't do what you do with the other. He's like, that guy lived. Yeah. He's like, what, what do you want? You're like, yeah. Oh, perfect yeah. shot. Wearing his get... white pants. Oh, my God. Yeah. You did a yeah, you did a garbage job. Ooh, he like did quick. Yeah. That we're going to make awful. it anyways. That would suck balls. That was one of my biggest fears growing up. What are those bloody thing because it's like it's like the adults really put the fear into us about those like don't run around, <laughs> they around those. Like, i know they should fucking a. oh they were 100 percent right i'm just saying that it was just a uh it was just one of those things where it's like it, like anything else they tell us they're like don't go like don't go down by the creek there's like needles down there and then we're like splashing in the creek <laughs> but like that was the one thing we listened needles to. We sticking just, out of your feet like five of them yeah Actually, you want to go with an even number because hopefully one of them was disease, the disease and the other one was like the cure. Yep. Right? If you go with five, yee, you want yeah. six, eight, four. Yeah, exactly. Why'd they even go after the guy? They just shot the guy like five times and then they were worried about him suffocating yeah. in the world's most suffocation inducing like pool cover. Exactly. Like, dear God, it was like cellophane on the top. Usually yes. it's like they're real thick. That yeah, this that thing way. like wrapped him up like he was a goddamn Christmas dinner. And it was it was instant like a vacuum seal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a, yeah, a vacuum <laughs> seal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where are they? Are they at that guy's house still? I don't. I guess because this ain't either one of their places. Uh, well, the cops are ever. He's watching TV in his undies. That's amazing. <clears throat> it's part of the job. Yeah. If you're in war, yeah. Okay, and you save my life. Mm-hmm. 
can you really say like you owe me one? Like it's our job no. to save each other and kill yeah. the enemy. There's definitely no I owe. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like an I owe you is I come to you. I need a favor. I something. There's I I don't think that there's any. There should be no need for like a quid pro quo of I owe you. Right. Like the, like there's no way that that guy should be calling in that shit. <laughs> right. But yeah. Like, but at the same time, like as the person whose life was saved, I would feel that. Right. I would be like, I would not be alive if it wasn't for you. And I'll never forget that like kind of thing. Right. So basically you have a right to be a shithead to me or whatever. And it's like, I just have to forgive you. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say the worst <laughs> comment ever. What? <laughs> okay, I was let's just, just, let's just I was gonna say even Danny Glover can't tell black people apart. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, which one of these are my kids? <laughs> <What>? That's well, <laughs> that's on him then. That's on him. Well, if he if he says that, that's not your fault. Uh, the. You know what? And to be honest with you, in the reverse side, I don't give a fuck. I yeah. used to know these Filipino dudes with the boats and they'd be like, I can't tell you apart. I was like, that's hilarious. I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, no. like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. This is the first time that he meets. Yeah, he's meeting the family for the first time. She Now that I know she's a singer, she couldn't be anything else. I agree. She looks like, like, uh, like she should be in the Pointer Sisters or something. She reminds Precisely. me of... I feel like I've, I can see her... Singing. Yep. Like, like, she, a, yeah, she was also a backup singer for Elvis back in the day. Oh, like not like, I don't know how far back in the day I how they got her in this movie. Like, it, I have no idea. And like most of what she does, when you look in her thing, she's got acting roles, but like more recently, she's got like very small, like she was in some Chris, she was in the Christmas Chronicles too. Ooh. Uh, with, uh, Kurt, uh, Russell and Goldie Hawn. Oh, I like that couple. Oh, so it's so the daughter's 17. Yeah. And in the next couple, doesn't she end up with Riggs? No, he thinks, he, think, he keeps thinking that that's what's going oh, on. Oh, that's right. But she ends up with Chris Rock's character. Right, so that's right. And that. he thinks that they're doing something, but then it's like, yeah, yeah. it's all in his head. It's always, there's we're always We're planning your surprise party. Yeah, there's they're always They're both naked vibe. in the bathroom. Like, what are you doing in here naked? Oh, yeah. continue. I Just hit, for my surprise yeah, party. We hid, yeah, we hid the surprise party plans in her vagina, and my penis <laughs> is the only thing long enough to get it out. Exactly. So that's Tracy Wolf, who's the daughter there. Um, she is in a couple of TV things. She was in the Cosby show, like, for a couple of episodes. Uh, she's modeled occasionally, but she hasn't done anything else, really, as an actress. It was, like, these movies and then just a couple of little spots, and that was it. Which is kind of like crazy to me. You would think like even like this movie had it introducing uh, Tracy Wolf. Like that's like kind of like this is her first thing. This is her like coming right, out. Right. This is and the... then nothing else really came of it other than the rest of these movies, which is true of everybody. Like they didn't replace any of them. I find that very impressive. I <laughs> like this. <laughs> like even. <laughs> Oh, God, they even had to make, <laughs> like, this is the whitest black family in the world, and they even made him rap. <laughs> they live next door to the Huxtables. Yeah. Actually, this is a very um, well-known place, because this is uh, this is the Warner Brothers back lot where this house is. Oh, is it? So it's It like, does look it's, kind of familiar. It's in a lot of things. They said it's in tons of movies, it and does... it's like random people's houses. It yeah. Was, uh, notably, it was like one of the houses in the Partridge family, oh. and it was like... So it's like they're on the lot. Yeah, they're there. And uh, very close by is actually the uh, fountain from Friends. You know that... Oh, my God. Yeah. Did you hear the thing that somebody said... I, I don't really watch Friends, no. but somebody said that they had noticed a tick that uh, Jennifer Aniston does every time she speaks. Yeah. Just before she speaks, she does something. Uh, I don't know what it is, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh, and it like ruins Friends, apparently. Oh, really? Friends was already ruined for me. Oh, oh, she does a lot of that. Oh, everybody <laughs> does an impression that's of it. her. Everybody who does an impression of her always does. Oh, I went to this. At the end. Just, Maybe that's oh. it then. I don't think I want to go back to the rapping, the freestyle rapping. Yeah. The daughter was doing pretty good. They shouldn't have stopped her. And I don't think that he looks like the kind of guy who would be into jazz or yeah. something like that. Not not jazz. I don't want to, you blues. know, think of he's a blues but something. Guy, yeah. And I think that he would be the type of guy with like, what's this shit? 
Yeah. When he hears oh. rap. He oh, might, absolutely. You know, he's probably like into the, you know, the Eric Clapton's and the, mm-hmm. you know, whoever the hell else. But in fairness, though, this, I guess this is still technically early enough. Like they made this in 86. Yeah. So I think this is still like we're just coming out of the really, really innocent rap of the like, uh, the, like a hip hop, a tip, hip into the hip, right? Hip, which is the weirdest song. Have you ever heard that entire hip-hop, song? You don't stop, but he's just like making words up. No, but like there's like five different guys rapping in it, and they all just basically rap all their rap, like everything they had. They're just going, and one of the verses is about how like Superman's got a tiny dick, <laughs> and like it's literally he's like, he's like, I'll go to get with Lois Lane, and he talks about how like he's like how Superman's got a small package, and like it was just like, I was like, what is happening? happening i was like there's no cohesion it was like almost like it's like picture this is going to be my second straight wu-tang clan analogy but imagine if you like did a song and like every single person from the wu-tang clan you're like go think about what ever you want to think <laughs> yeah, about and then everybody come in and wrap that as yeah. your verse and like one guy start like talking about like he's like i gotta buy a new pair of cleats for the softball tournament and then the I... next guy's <laughs> like and then the next guy's like science reward i think that was grandmaster flash yeah. And the Furious Five or whatever they're called, right? Mm-hmm. They're furious. They don't care. I don't they're care what furious. you're talking about. I'm talking about this. Exactly. It would be like when we used to do those like stream of consciousness writing things where you'd have to like pass the paper back and forth to each other and we just ignored each other's story. <laughs> where you were just like once upon a time there was a castle and blah 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 and you were like space pirates blah blah and, like it was just like you went in a total different direction. And then guitar whales. <laughs> And now everybody's cats. Deal with it. Oh, uh, now they're going to be all hung over. For, well, he, Riggs is used to that. Yeah, exactly. Murtaugh's going to have yeah. a big old headache. Well, it's the only way. It's If he doesn't drink, he wakes up in the morning and he's like, oh, the clarity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what? It's our second day together, bud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to that think of the neighborhood fair. that I feel like, I don't know if it's poltergeist or, yeah. man, it looks so, yeah, but it must be good. You said it must be because like you yeah. said, it's in, in everything, right? Yeah. It's like the back lot or it's like the back to the future or yeah. some shit. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like, well, it's the Warner back lot. So it'll be, it'll be dependent on that too. Right. But it's like, yeah, there's so much of, uh, y- you see most of the houses over and over and over. And right. Over. What are you talking about? I don't know. Somebody it's making so... a shot. Oh. Just about oh, being a sniper, him. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Oh, Riggs. There's a scene, and I don't know what version we're watching, and I, um, because there's a director's cut of Lethal Weapon, and I don't remember if this scene that I'm thinking of is in the director's cut. That's there's a sniper. And they like have to like take out a sniper. And oh like, right, yeah, kids, or whatever. And I don't know if that's in this version or not. I guess we'll find out. Right. This version's just north of <laughs> an hour forty. So. You like my wife? You said it was an hour and thirty. You lying scum. I thought it was. Uh, right when I saw, right when you turned on, I was like, "You lying dog." No, I know the other one is for sure though. It's two hours and thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be alone. Oh my God. See, that's the worst when like you're having a good time and then somebody's got to just bring it down. Yeah. Like, yeah, now I'm going to go home and contemplate suicide. Thanks. Good night. Good seeing you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. That cat. Good stuff. What, What's he eating the cake? Yeah, it looks like oh, a damn cat. Oh, he's got his... using the cake as his kitty litter again. Happy birthday, Sergeant Murtaugh. <laughs> this, that, was Riggs. Like, it's... that was a card Riggs made <laughs> in crayon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look like somebody. Oh. Oh, I was hoping he was going to open the skinniest one and it would have been a grenade with the pin out. Oh. <laughs> but, like, it, but as long as it's in a present, it doesn't blow. That's right. Up. Only when you see it. Nice. Oh my God. Look at this. A sexy tape. A VHS tape. And a textbook from like eighth grade uh-oh. history. Somebody's some, uh-oh. This is his old, it's a fucking big yearbook, yo. Yeah, Holy shit. Cool. Well, it's LA, right? That's probably like 30,000 kids in yeah. the grade. Uh oh! What? What? I don't. I can't. I could not read any. He's of a those bootleg words. of the Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> oh, oh, he should not be watching uh, this without uh, his wife. Oh, this looks like it's the beginning of like a Ric Flair promo. <laughs> I kiss the girls. <laughs> Woo! Those glasses. 
Oh, is that's the girl? Yeah. That's the girl who fell off the old balcony. Yeah. Oh, something's been discovered. Somebody do better on the old camera work here, man. Yeah, I know. I she think, looks like Beth I think Phoenix. what you're trying to say is zoom out. <laughs> yeah, she does. Yeah. She looks like Beth Phoenix. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that Beth Phoenix was probably not born when this movie came out. I don't care how time works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If we can base uh, me on an old age of Murtaugh, then... Oh, fuck. Class of 83. She thinking about old. his own daughter. He's like, Jesus Christ, he was just a fucking kid. Yeah. That's the other thing, too. And it's a thing that with our next movie, too, I, I, I have a little bit of a problem with. I hate when they put people off as underage and then show I, you dude, them naked. Dude, I was waiting... Oh. To talk about this in the next movie, I'm okay. not even kidding you. Okay, well we'll talk. We, we'll, we'll, hit, we'll hold it off for that. We'll wait, yeah. But I, I, I have... I've been wondering this same thing. Yeah. For a while, and we'll, right. we'll get into it in the next one. Two weeks, two weeks, guys. So you can turn this one off. I it's guess. funny just that you just said out. that too because I was totally waiting because I was <laughs> like, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about that exact subject. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh because... look, see, he can't even see. Riggs is used to being fucking hungover. He's got to get yeah. him out of bed, and he's like, You're, he's, it's two thirty, bud. He's a killer early <clears throat> riser. Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> see, once you feed him once, man, they never leave. That's exactly it. This I is love... when RoboCop comes in and shoots beside them. I really love their. Um, their rapport. Their, yes, exactly. Their uh, chemistry is the word I was looking for. Um, I wonder what he feels about. Like, I don't think I ever saw any comment from Danny Glover about all the stuff with Mel Gibson. I wonder how he. Feels. Oh, right. Just because they were so close, and and he might very well go, "Look, that's definitely not the guy I know." Right. Or something like that. But it might. Who knows? He's like. Um, it was interesting just because I was reading a thing. I guess some basketball player was making a bunch of uh, anti-Semitical uh, things, right? Like, uh, comments and stuff like that. And I, but it was just like he would just spewing out the words, like he was ignorant of it and stuff. And Julian Edelman from the Patriots, who is and who is Jewish, just said to him, "He's like, I don't think that you are coming at this with like." you know, intent to harm or anything like that. He's like, but I will tell you that is worse. He's like, because ignorance fuels hatred right. because it normalizes it. And it was really good. He wasn't like trying to cancel him or anything like that. He's like, I go to Miami a lot. I would love to come and just ha hang out with you and we can talk for a little while. Right. You know, no, no anger, no anything. And then, um, uh, John Stewart r responded to his thing just like you like you are a mensch man like he was like you said the exact right thing is like it is about the conversation and coming together maybe I can friggin right. make you understand why what you did was hurtful and then you know and that was the thing it was actually a thing too I saw yesterday on it was a it was a repeat of the Connors just as like Carrie was going to bed and we were shutting stuff off and the Connors was with on. Roseanne on it no but well it was pre it was post Roseanne and oh, that's right. Because if it's the Connors, yeah. it's no Roseanne. Because yeah. then it would have been Roseanne. Correct. Right. And then um, they had a discussion. Bam. I feel like uh, I I feel like Murtaugh should have like RoboCop's gun. Like there's some giant. <laughs> like, uh, nice hit. But the um, but yeah, they were having it was uh, Dan and Darlene were having a conversation because Darlene's son got into an argument with like a MAGA kid who punched him in the face. And then they were having that. And he was like, of course, that's where the MAGA kid takes it. Right. Well, and well, it was basically like they're going back and forth. And then he calls the MAGA kid an idiot. And then the MAGA kid hits him. And then Does they he can't handle the truth. And then the yes. Uh, <laughs> and then the. um. Uh, and then he just talks about, he's like, why can't it be like, he's like me and my friends, we argue over who's ruining this country. And then at the end of the day, we both realize that this quarterback's better than this quarterback. <laughs> and that's all that really matters. <laughs> and then he's, and then she's like, no, you can't have a conversation. We're going to vote. And then whoever loses, they just have to deal with it. He's like, how is anything ever going to get fixed? Yeah. Like, like how the hell like, does that work? People have to talk to each other. <laughs> Love that. He did say that he was a super yeah. marksman, right? Yeah. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you love if your entire life, every time there was a lull, there was just like a. 
No, but it has to be a reason lull, right? You can't yeah. just have that. It's yeah. got to be like another one of those fucking days. And then, yeah. you know, like. No, but you know, every date you ever had would be the best. Like any awkward silence. It would just be like, yeah, so uh, did I tell you that I did this? And then you're like, yeah, you mentioned that. Oh. <laughs> and she's like, I won't mind like, to be a fart noise. <laughs> Oh, what was that, too? What is with the 80s and people randomly wearing 3D glasses? That is it. not an outlier. <laughs> the new pair that I have is like, uh, oh, that oh pl- yeah. I was just going to say that plane's about to crash into that house, and instead the house blew up. What a day for those kids across the street, man. I know. They're right? like, fucking house blew up. Oh, Look I like the, the shirt he's got on. He's got like look he's at the wearing, style on his. One he's kid, wearing Nomi's jacket from Showgirls. Yeah, like but <laughs> the kid, the one kid's got like a sweater on. It's fucking L.A. Yeah, that's and the, the other thing. kid's got like a tasseled. Uh, I like their style. I love it. This is why when people say like the like oh Hollywood people are pussies or whatever, it's because they can't handle like. They can't handle warm weather. They look, oh, I'm so cold. People who live up in the cold like us were out, like literally. I was out today in a shorts and a t-shirt all day. It was wicked, and it was, and people would be wearing coats. Oh, like, it was so beautiful the last couple of days here. Yeah. Uh-oh, I <laughs> oh, I like Riggs. He comes over. He's like, your kid's got all your fingers and toes. Oh yeah, he is just wearing random 3D glasses. Yeah, that's the thing. It's his it's... prescription. Like, oh, come even... on. Yeah, that's fair. It's about time we had a fucking explosion just, or something. Just to throw in body bags. How much was this movie? You got it? Like this? Uh... Uh, yeah, I do have this information. Thanks for asking, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> the budget was $15 million, Oh, that's not bad. And it made $65.2 million. It debuted number one, uh, beating Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Ooh. Which was interesting because John Saxon, who is the... Uh, uh, what's her face? Heather Langenkamp's dad in the oh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and he was in Nightmare on Elm Street three. He turned down the chance to play Mr. Joshua, who Gary Busey plays in this movie. Oh no way! So that's fucked. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, I don't know what it was, uh, but anyways, it beat that and Platoon. Um, were the top three movies that week? Stayed number one the next week when Heat, Evil Dead, and Raising Arizona came out. None of those movies. Sorry, Evil Dead two. And Raising Arizona, uh, none of those movies cracked the, cracked the top 10 their opening week. No shit. That's just how, like, it was back then, though. It's like <clears> movies <throat> would have to, like, like unless it was something that would, like, basically sequels were the only things that, like, debuted number one for some reason. Well, well some days it would take some time, right? I guess word yeah. of mouth or. Well, and that's the thing. I can't go like, see it this weekend. I got to go see it next mm-hmm. weekend. And, or... there were, and also they there were still regional releases at the time. So like there would be like something's opening weekend might have only come out in like the Midwest. Right. And then nowhere else. It's like, no, this is a Midwest movie. Nobody in New York's going <laughs> to care. It's so weird, eh? Uh, it's tr- but it's true. It's just how they did it back then because they didn't want to waste the money on like trying to advertise it everywhere and stuff like that. And then everybody realized, no. Adver- and I think probably the internet made it easier, too, because now they can advertise it everywhere. Right. They don't have to buy ad space all over That's why like, the, the Rock gets millions of dollars extra yeah. just to tweet about his movies because he yeah. has so many followers that it counts as like doing an interview on entertainment tonight or something. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And like, <clears throat> that's why like, I like, honestly they should use like any good movie studio should just be like using Kendall Jenner in their it's, movies. It's too much rock out there. Yeah. I've been oversaturated with the rock. Mm-hmm. Now like there's little rock, middle rock, old rock on TV. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my geez. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> well, yeah, you got you got young rock, but I mean, overall, like movie wise, I don't find him oversaturated right now. He's not in a ton. No, he's not. I agree. I so, agree. With that. I just I don't know. I just feel like well, I'm seeing him too much. Yeah. Oh, well, he's just putting himself. I, I, I think that like with nothing else to do, he's just putting himself out there. All right. Uh-huh. Has your even he draws him in perfect three. Yeah, it's like amazing. It's like, he's like he's like, he, it appears to be two guys, one blue guy and one red guy sitting just <laughs> off offset from each other. Um so the movie uh just continuing on with this stuff. Uh it stayed number one in week three when the movie Burglar came out, which debuted at number two. Uh then it went down to number two in week four when Blind Date came out. Then it went down to number three in week five when Police Academy 4 came out. Nice. Which is interesting because that has another connection to next Tube. movie. There's so many connections to the next movie that I almost shit my pants. Of course. There's so many people in it and everything, right? Like, That's true. there's bound to be. That's true. And then it went there's down. There's bound to be some splashback. Yeah. And then it went down to number five the, uh, 
that last week with the uh, release of The Secret to My Success and the re-release of The Aristocats. Ooh! You know, it's really funny because we get down a lot on, like, when they're going to re-release a movie. You're like, oh, it's just a money grab. It's like Because they did it a lot. No, but, it, well, it's, it, yes, it is. But it's, like, we feel like it's something that's a modern thing. Right. They did it so much more back then. Like, every time I look up a movie, there's at least one movie that's in re-release during the box office run ah. of whatever. Because there's, mo- there's another movie in next week's that was in re-release that beat it as well. Like, beat that oh, movie. is that, like, right. There's, there's always, and it's most. I would think about why they yeah. would choose to re-release a movie. I think it's, like, probably on an anniversary or something like that. And it's, this is still, like, VHS <clears throat> is new and expensive at this point. So the only way to see these movies were in the movies. Yeah, they were too, eh? So it Fucking would be like beta, beta, beta. Oh, they're figuring some shit out here. I don't know how you can wear that goddamn. No wonder Murtaugh's Mer- Mer- sweating all the time. Like fuck, man, uh-huh. you had like a sweater on. I guess you probably acclimatize though when you get used to like the yeah. heat, and then when it's even, well, that's it's exactly. only ninety-seven. You're freezing. Yeah. Like I saw that when um, I when I was in Florida, and it was November. Uh, and we were there and there were so many people wearing sweaters and stuff like that. And they were just like basking in the heat. We're like, oh my God, this is so good. Oh, uh, are they going to say that someone pushed her? Yeah. Uh-oh. Take it easy. It's just a pill I was going to put in your drink to kill you. <laughs> just calm down. Yeah, you look at that guy's face. There's no trusting. It's him. Oh, and, yeah. Him and Dennis Farina are the least two, <laughs> the two least trustworthy people in the world. <laughs> he does have that whole like yeah. Dennis Farina kind of, but he reminds. He totally reminds me of. Uh, but it, it is him anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always like the sheriff. Oh, absolutely, and the crooked sheriff. Like he was the crooked mayor. Yeah. Uh, he seems like he would be the bad guy in like a Charlie's Angels episode or something. You know what I mean? Like, like I what really if I get... he was? <laughs> he probably was. Oh, this is uh, neither here nor there, but I released it in our when we did our uh, right? last week's video when I did the video version. You remember we were talking about the Dr. Seuss thing, and I said I always picture when I when I just hear that something was racist back in the old days, I always picture like the Japanese, like whatever. Right, hundred percent what it was. I no it way. It was, and I I put up a picture of it and stuff like that, and he uh, he described the Chinaman with his eyes all aslant. Oh my lord! And I was like, oh yeah, that well, you go ahead and, you go ahead and cancel. <laughs> oh yeah, because you sent me that there was like six of them. One of them sounded pretty. I always yeah. thought like as a joke, like you're you're flipping through the book, and it's like one fish, two fish, blue fish, and the next one's like a Holocaust Jew. picture. You're just like, oh my <laughs> god, like what? One fish, two fish, Jew fish control Hollywood. <laughs> uh, but the. Uh... It's, that's, that's still a, book, a thing. That's eh? a book that I. Uh, that's what Mel, Mel was talking about. Yeah. yeah, that's what he was talking about when they pulled him over. Yeah. Doctor Seuss. He's like, "Don't you know I'm drunk driving? The Jews are in Hollywood." There was another. Oh, well. Yeah, there was another book where on a page where they were talking about people from Africa. It was a bunch of monkeys, <laughs> like legitimate. Like, oh, but, they, Lord. but they had big red lips. And but all you that, see, like, like, you like know. he's got all a party nog out. It's just like who doesn't love warm <laughs> party nog? They got to show it again. <laughs> Don't well, you like my room temperature nog? Yeah, it's just, it's but it's party nog. So I'm guessing oh, is there alcohol in it? Is it literally called like? Is yeah, it yeah, it's actually party yes, nog? it's party nog. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Fuck, show it again. He's like Mer- he's like Riggs. You go stand over out the window, looking cool, smoking. Yeah, I'll go talk to him. Oh, oh, he's now figuring out that this guy's the guy. Yeah, he freaking gave his own daughter the drugs that killed her. I'm doing that right now. <clears throat> My 10-year-old daughter, she's getting too big for her britches. <laughs> she's too smart. Stop talking. Oh, he's in too deep, buddy. That's what I... Oh, fuck. There he is. Oh, right <laughs> through that. That wasn't the party nog. It that was party, just eggnog. That was just eggnog. It is Christmas time, so I at least love the nog that, like, they Did out. they know, like, at exactly this time, he'll be in that window? They were just hoping that to pull the helicopter up and they'd find him somewhere to shoot him? I think Mel gave him the signal, if you're, if you're asking me. Wink. <laughs> now, Mel's like, the signal, I'm going to smoke seven <laughs> cigarettes in a row. On the seventh has, cigarette, I'm going to say, God damn it. Yeah. Has and then anybody, you come up and shoot him. Do, a real question. Has anybody ever taken down a helicopter with a handgun? Yes, John McClane, Die Hard 3. Okay, no, but like a re- I'm I'm going real right now. I know that was mo- based on a true story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I like that the helicopter's way long gone, and he is yeah. still. So might as well put another clip. He's still shooting. Yeah. It's like the, 40 minutes later, it's gone. Yeah. The general, too, his general, Peter McAllister. Peter McAllister was the dad in uh, Home Alone. I was going to say, somewhere in there, the guy said yeah. that he worked for something, something Air America. Yes. Which was a, a Mel Gibson movie. Yeah, it was. Uh -oh. I guess he meant the actual airline, though. But, like, yeah, Air America in Vietnam was a... Uh, it was a. Oh, you got like uh, the transfer. same phone. Yeah, that's well, the only phone there was. The Motorola Heavy Bag. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> that thing looked amazing. It probably had great reception though. It's like, yeah. You could reach Mars with it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a joke he really told the hookers, like in real life. Exactly right. You gotta get him laughing first if you want to get him in the alley to kill him. You gotta build a quick uh, report. Oh my god, uh, he's there to drive <laughs> by literally everybody. Wow, it's was like that he, uh, Gary Busey? It yes. looked like him. I don't know. Every everybody in California, anybody that they speak to gets shot. Yeah, look, at, he managed to like they got he they got around the corner and rig and Murtaugh was running after him before he even made it through the window. That's how badass he was. <laughs> Oh, fuck. He spits out the bullets. That must be awful. Like, how bad? He's a good thing I didn't get shot because I didn't wear my vest. <laughs> I totally I said, forgot. Woo! Because, because it makes me look bulky in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes my front look bulky. Like, that must feel awful still getting shot even with a Oh, vest hell like yes. Right? Like, oh my God. I'm sure in real life he would be out. I, I actually don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know why I said I, that. I don't know what happens when you get shot with a fucking bullet from vest on. I'm guessing at least some internal injury. Like, the impact would probably... You'd be like all bruised. bruised. Oh, yeah. And, uh, speaking of which... I would uh, guess. I, went, I don't fucking know. I went to an osteopath today to, like, get my back worked on because I put my back out. I redid my daughter's room, and I pinched something in my back, and, like, I literally... We went to go for a walk the next day. I couldn't make it around the block. I was in screaming pain. Oh, fuck. And so I went and got... Lower? Uh, no, middle, like, by the lower rib. Okay, yeah. In the back there. And uh, the osteopath, she, like... She really, like, looks at your movement... Before my nose is starting to plug up, I apologize. Um, she really looks at your movement and then kind of like determines where problems are and then works on those problems. Right. And she was like, okay, like put your hand and then like run it down the side, like lean. And I did that on my right side and she went, Ugh. And I was <laughs> you know like, it's oh, when they make a no that case. can't be good. <laughs> and she's Yay. like, and she's like, your back is messed up. And she's like, there's so much, there were so many things wrong. She's like, this is twisted. This is here. She's like, you're, the T part of your spine, like the upper part of your spine is pushed down and compressed so hard on your lumbar. And she's like, and it was probably fine. Like it was, it was compensating and like dealing with itself while you were just doing everyday things. She's like, right. but the second you do something you're not used to doing, it's like, like hell. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, she's going to spend some time fixing me ever. Well, I, I don't think mine is that bad, but my sciatics <coughs> get really bad. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks ago, I just woke up, man, and I was like, holy shit, I couldn't even move? Yeah. I was, I don't know what I did, but now that I got my new Douglas mattress. Ooh. Oh, my God, him. it's so amazing. He Even though he oh. bought one, send him a free one so he can stack them. <clears throat> Fucking right on. Uh, the other thing, too, man, I can't recommend enough. Were they racing, too? Getting Sorry, one we're... of those TENS machines. Oh, I don't know what movie this is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't recommend enough that one of those tens machines you can do like you do your sciatic you tube one pad here one pad in your back of your thigh right it'll take care of business for you. I always see like like uh, I've been watching these chiropractic videos man yeah. and it's like they they do like if you're having lower back pain they mess yeah. with your feet and your yeah, yeah. legs well this and then is... it like. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, this is what like... osteopaths do too. Is they they see how your body's all connected. I should go to a chiropractor. I'm sure yeah. I have it in the benefit package. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's always whatever. like five hundred dollars of like each thing for the. Year. Oh man, I could go for a crack. Let me tell you, or just some crack to get rid yeah. of this pain. I want to go because they uh, now have. Um, this is Riggs' house. Yeah, they have these like decompression tables apparently. 
and I want to go on one of those. Yeah, the ones where they flip you. Oh my god, did you see that that ad with the old guy? Oh, and now and I can like, jump, and he jumps like, and he makes it. And the best part is, he's like, "Look at how high I can jump." And I'm like, "Oh, that's not that high, no, even for an old man." He doesn't say, "Look how high." I think he's oh. like, "Look at what I can do," because yeah. of the machine. And he goes, "Yay!" And he essentially just moves his arms like this, pretending that he jumped. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh oh. Uh oh. Did we receive? You know who she also reminds me of the the one. The mother from I'm gonna get you, sucker. A little bit, yeah. Uh oh, what happened? Uh oh, they were threatened. Oh no, they have a landline. Is that the problem? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> is that? Is that... Ooh, oh, oh shit! Uh, they kidnapped his daughter. No, he's just say I think. I don't think they took the daughter. Yes, they did. That's oh, why they're they? all freaking out. Oh, I just think they they saw the. Oh, they got the kid. Okay. Oh, fuck. They're going to die uh, now, buddy. The, oh, I thought we were just going to get that moment, that nod. We're like, we know what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Don't forget to hang the phone up. <laughs> he's very meticulous. Yes, about that. he's very ADHD. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be literally the most terrifying thing ever. That would be the best if during uh. his suicide scene, he's like, got the bullet in his mouth. He's like crying. And then you just hear the beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like the phone's off the hook. He's like, oh, <laughs> click. <laughs> I miss no, he does not Gary so Busey of old. It's funny because um, I was actually looking for Under Siege. That was going to be one of the movies I was going to suggest doing. And I was like, man, like Gary Busey before his accident, he was so good. Like, I mean, it is what it is. It's not his fault. Right? It happens. Like, and it's it just, happens. it's just a bummer. And he's it's still just, getting roles. We wouldn't have yeah, the ginger dead man. He's done, I don't a, think he's done a lot it, uh, of stuff, but actually we're convinced this might come out by the, by the time this comes out, we might already know the answer, but we're very convinced he's one of the new masked singer contestants. He's the raccoon. We think the ginger dead man. Well, no Gary Busey, Gary Busey. Yeah. Like, how can you tell? Like, that sounds like the singing voice of Gary Busey. Well, no, because when you when they do their talking bit, it's it, the voice is like disguised. Right. You, you can hear the way they talk and it's really gravelly. And it's like it's like that kind of thing where you instantly you're like, that's, that's either Gary, Gary Busey. Busey or Nick Nolte. Right. And then when he was like singing, he was screaming. Right. He was just like, ah. Like, and it was just like, I was like, I don't know. I think that's him. I like where Buddy's like, I'm not doing this. He takes his helmet off. Yeah. What's his name? Oh, uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Like, I'm surprised he lasted that long. I've got no a fucking feeling. Loose I have a feeling he knew somebody like involved in the production and they asked him if he'd do it. And he's like, I'll do it, but I'm doing one episode. I'm yeah. not staying there for fucking 10 weeks yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Screw that. And he's just, well, I'm sure they film it all in a row. It's not really ten weeks, is it? They just it's no. How they I, roll well, it out. I I don't know how long the actual production right. process takes place. They definitely shoot multiple episodes in a row because they have the multiple groups, right? So right. They, they break it down like that. But still, he's like, I'm not staying for the entire duration of this. It's like the the hubris of a man who thinks he's not going to be eliminated anyways. Right. Like he was terrible. <laughs> It's not like, oh my God, like, yeah, because we all know how pipes. wonderful uh, Mickey Rourke's singing voice is. Yeah. It's about as nice as his face. It sounded like Tubin throat singing, <laughs> like by a man with no throat. <laughs> <laughs> or like somebody with that, and it comes out with like an album. Oh, That's God. my Christmas album. Look at him go. Oh, they're doing it his oh, way. They did remove the sniper scene. So that's part of the other. That was another one of Shane Black's dark editions that made it through, but it was in the director's cut. Right. I don't think I remember the sniper scene. Or maybe you know it what is mean? this one. I don't know. Maybe this is it. This is part of I have no clue. Well, he's going to do sniper shit right now. That's yeah, why he's, he's running out into the desert yeah. to get a good spot to. Oh, so well, good. hopefully he runs the opposite way that the helicopter's coming from because they'll just run over and see him. Yeah. Yeah, they they have a they have a bird's eye view. Yeah, quite they, they, yeah. <laughs> there he is. Could you imagine if all of a sudden you just see somebody point from out of the thing, and all of a sudden, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh shit, I'm too old for this shit." It looks like it's riding on top it of is. the car, on the truck, or whatever. So they oh, didn't yeah. even like these guys are so not fucking around. It's like these guys just randomly, very easily you know kind of stumbled upon this whole thing and it's like before they could even ask a question these guys came out showed themselves and started yeah. killing everyone around yeah exactly <laughs> well, it's like wow you like we didn't even find you just yeah. came to us Gary Busey's like we're blown and he starts like shooting bazookas <laughs> yeah, he's like, like we're not blown <laughs> literally nobody knows that this is us 
Oh, fuck. I still feel like that tail rotor is not even a real thing. Like, I, I think it's just like a fake thing they use CG. to cut people. Did you see the video of the Mars thing, the Mars rover landing? It was yes. super cool. Yeah, it was super cool. cool. I get so into that shit. Oh, yeah. It's... I just watched it the other day. I totally forgot it even happened. So I got so Now that Trump's off TV, like, I don't even watch it. Yeah. Like, I don't even watch Like, I used to watch it, but just get so mad. Yeah. And now I'm like, I don't even care about anything. Yeah. It's like everything feels... Everything feels more like the status quo of like, like it's that kind of generic, like, yeah, whatever. It's like, uh, happening happening. you know, you hear like Joe Biden's dog nipped at one of the security off. That's yeah. like the hardest news that we get yeah. out of there before it was like Trump pressed the Diet Coke button. One didn't instantly appear and he bit a lady. Yes. You know what I mean? You're like, wow, that's news. Yeah. And then he said, he said fake news after biting her. Yeah. Fake news. But the, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I, I'm so like, I, my mental health has ta- definitely taken a uh, boost since he's been gone. I even <laughs> I stopped, everybody, I, I made a point on Twitter. I don't like no negative crap on Twitter, only positive stuff on Twitter now. Good. Yeah. I was like, I can't do that. It's anymore. like the good it's news just, network. That's what I always thought there should be, man. The yeah. good news network. Do you ever watch uh, John Krasinski's some good news? No. Yeah. It was, it's, it was a lot of fun. He did a lot of like really nice things for people. There was like a girl who like her favorite movie was frozen and I can't remember something that happened, but they got like the entire cast of frozen to come on and like sing to her. Uh, or, cool. Or no, it was That's Hamilton. Cool. It was Hamilton. She had bought Hamilton tickets with her own money. She was like 13 years old. I tried she, to watch Hamilton, but it's a musical. Oh, I love Hamilton. I'm like, start singing. I'm like, eh. I like, I liked Hamilton a lot because it was so many different styles. I never, I should Hamilton. watch it. I, I, yeah. I'm kidding. Like I should watch the thing. Yeah. Like, there's some that just, like, like, even, like, I liked Rent at the time, but now Rent bores me. But, like, Hamilton, it comes at you with so much variety, and none of it is show toony. Right. And it's just, like, oh, this is a strange idea for a musical, too. Like, what an original kind of a... Yeah. Well, it was based on, like, when he did the thing ages ago. (sighs) There's that grenade I was talking about. There he is. (laughs) I found it. Um, But he... uh, he originally went to some like poets thing for uh, Obama back in the day. And he was putting together something called the Hamilton mixtape. And, and he did the first number by himself. And it was just like that. It was without like a whole cast. It was just right. literally him. And he was, it was basically all from the point of view of Aaron Burr and it was b- brilliant. And then I, I think they sh- ended up like workshopping it into a musical. Cool. And then it became this, monster of a thing and i was like i was so impressed by it and like those guys are going on to big things david diggs who's one of uh the actors in it is uh the new for the live action um little mermaid that's coming out he's playing sebastian who is uh david diggs he was in hamilton you'll, okay, you'll yeah. know him to see him oh shit uh, they just shot rigs yeah Mur- oh, fuck it's going down murtaugh whatever there's a um, there's a burger place in Toronto called the Burgers Priest, and there's a uh, they're supposed to have a very good burger. They are oh they have a great. Burger. They're always in the Now magazine, yeah. uh, like top. Yeah, they were also <laughs> on You Gotta Eat Here on the Food Network, which is like diners, drives and drives right. and dives for Canada. Um, but they <laughs> guy very uh, here, but Heart they have a, number ten. Yeah, but they have a uh, put some more wham sauce on that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but they had a, uh, they've got a milkshake there called the Riggs and Murtaugh and it's a black and white milkshake. Oh, cool. Which I just had a black and white milkshake. Like the black and white cookie from Seinfeld. Yeah. Well, this one, it's basically a black and white milkshake, or at least the one that I just experienced was vanilla milkshake with like chocolate syrup all around the outside. Right. And then it like all mixes in as you're drinking it. And it's really good. Rare. I always wanted to try that Ooh. milk that they had at the, this, the, the milk that Luke Skywalker drinks out oh, of the blue. weird alien's penises. Yeah, yeah it's um, I looked it's like it coconut up. Coconut milk or it's something. It's coconut milk and like a fruit mix. Fruity coconut milk. That kind yeah. of look, it looks like it's kind of tasty. They they have that and they have the green milk as well, and it's, a, oh, it's Jesus. similar stuff. We were well, that was part of our plans. We're now coming up on a on the year anniversary of that being canceled on us. Oh my god, I love that 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 that's an anniversary of your life now. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, two years now. Well, Can't no, go to be, Disney. Well, no, because it was literally <laughs> like just, you know, it's just because it, it lines up perfectly with the pandemic. Oh, my it God. It was literally the week, the week before um, 
you know, the week before we were supposed to go, the uh, the borders were closed. Right. So, uh, he looks so oh, official. Fuck. Oh yeah, <laughs> the torture scene. I thought for some reason this movie was over. I was no. like, this is gonna be the last. No, there's a huge. There's I, a friggin' still like, gotta fight Buddy in the Rain. There's an MMA fight still coming. Yeah. Up actually interesting when that fight comes up i'll just give you a little heads up a member of the gracie family helped choreograph that fight no way yes i've got his name Uh oh they're gonna pick the limo up with the with the helicopter girl don't stop yeah, I know. do not stop he's trying to hook uh the 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 arm there under the window yeah. you know what i'm saying so we can pick up the limo this reminds me of and true lies <clears throat> cannibal run two as well where they had the magnet on the bottom and they try to like lift the car with a magnet just like no i don't yeah. even know how to turn the radio on yeah exactly it's a limo what if she just turned left and it lost it they're just like where'd she go i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it you almost made it girl they're uh, not gonna f oh yes they are i was like they're not gonna land that helicopter before you can run yeah. out of there but now it's like right there quick hide in the back seat like how cast you know what i mean if you run fast enough they're gonna have to keep lifting off and landing yeah, yeah. you know Oh, there's enough play. I mean, like, look at where Fuck. they're at. There's no place for like they could literally just hover above her forever. So I they like run that, out of gas. Runs. Well, then they'll just, oh, they'll just shoot it. you, yeah, from above. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we uh, go, boy! This is a Saturday night at Toddy's house. Oh, and we have Al Leo, oh, the guy yeah. who's been in like fifty of our movies. Where? Well, wait for him. Who's the there chin? He is. There he oh, is. Ah, there he is. Al Leong. or Law. I I don't know if it's pronounced Lung. I Leon, think he was putting Leon, that glove on backwards. Leon. Yeah, well, he's not good at everything. He's good at looking badass in movies, but he can't put gloves on right. That's just a... What a drippy... Is this like their mm -hmm. dirty hobo hideout shower? Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. They just let this thing drip? There's going to be mold yeah, well, everywhere in there. Well, it's not like it's their friggin' bathroom facilities. It's just a, le <laughs> it's just a leaking pipe. <laughs> I really respect that he never did anything with his teeth. He doesn't have like Hollywood like. Oh yeah, totally. He jobs. gave her. Like he's, he's Gary like Busey he... through and through. Yeah, it's not like he's got a mess of teeth. He's just like it's just I didn't put veneers on all of them like some asshole. The uh, yeah, like Roman Reigns. <laughs> that comes back and like wow, so blatantly new teeth. Ding. But whatever, it looks all right. Yeah, you talk. I find when people get the veneers, it looks like they talk funny. Well, like they really have to really enunciate, you know what I mean? Well, because like the teeth you, are all yeah. yeah you've got what can like, I say? Look at these fuckers! I got cut. You don't have old chopper here, that's for sure. <laughs> you can order like a can of dog food with this mother. <laughs> My bottom ones are kind of uh, whatever, but I can eat through a rope. Like you will not tie me up like this. I will have eaten through that rope, no problem. <laughs> My razor zip tie teeth. You know what I do? I would drink all that water and then I'd pee on both of them in their <laughs> eyes. And then that would give me all the eyes. No. Then the uric acid would be burning their eyes. No, so no, no, no. Plenty of time to escape. They are electrocuting you. Yeah. You oh. then pee onto them, which then electrocutes them. He is a goddamn genius. <laughs> he is all over this today. I wish this man was my mom. <laughs> who, who, Al Leon? Yeah. Uh, Fuck, man. He, I wonder what he's getting for being in these movies. Who? It's like, this oh, is like Buddy for just, you know, just being the the guy in all I these probably, movies. He probably makes like near 100000 if he's in it for a long time. If you ever saw that guy, I would be like, oh, my God, shit's going down yeah. right now. Uh, is he still alive, you think? Yeah, he's alive. I haven't seen him in anything since he got run over by that dinosaur in like Jurassic Park 2. Well, oh, he got killed by that dinosaur. That's that's what stepped true. on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dinosaur really stepped on him. Oh, yeah, he's a method actor. So yeah, yeah he's like, you better get a dinosaur to step on me for I real, was brother. Say, no, that was Stan Win that was the Stan Winston <laughs> dinosaur accidentally <laughs> yeah. crushing him. What are they doing to him? Go spit. I like that he won't even spit. I know, like he just he just uh Cut his own swearing for TV. Mm -hmm. He like really saved them all. You know what? Money. It's interesting that you say it like that too, because I remember seeing this on TV at work, and I remember having that question in my head. I'm like, was that a TV edit? <laughs> right. I'm like, I don't think it was, Mister Falcon. Yeah. What kills me? Um, we've been rewatching uh, Agents of Shield, 
and they were torturing the one girl in that. But they were like, oh, she's been trained to deal with torture and all that. So, so she's like, we got to do something different. So they gave her like a um, a local anesthetic so she couldn't feel anything. And then they stuck the bamboo needles. things up under her yeah. fingernails uh, like the, like big metal needles under each of her fingernails and then she's like so like she could take it as it was happening but she's like when her hand comes but when the feeling comes back she's gonna feel all this pain at once and that, and that happened and she started like screaming and i was like oh my god it was like that friggin, you know, I get caught in these videos i'm like lying in bed and i can't sleep so then like what videos it starts, are you being caught it starts in? off with like zit popping oh. and then it goes to like ear wax coming out and then it's like dog boogers <laughs> and then uh yeah and then it's it goes the kind to of videos i'm watching before bed but go ahead <laughs> i lost what i was saying fuck it yeah no you were just watching all those videos the it, it was something what we saw oh. here because it was oh. gonna go into it's a good thing she shaved her armpits so these bad guys aren't like yeah what a monster wouldn't that be just funny though if she just had hairy pits? Big old hair, yeah. like oh fuck! That sounded the just those first couple Halloween. notes. It sounded like Halloween. Yep. Okay, yep. I'm, see, I'm it going totally crazy. did. That's awesome. Yeah, come on, Riggs. Pa 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 pa. You know what I saw the other day that blew my mind? It made me want to watch Lethal Weapon for the show too, or not Lethal Weapon, um, Naked Gun. I was watching. Um, we air that old. Uh, do south the mountie show. oh yeah do south and it's like the in chicago and the mounties there or whatever and from and he brought like his like mentor mountie in and it was leslie nielsen oh no and way it was like, he wasn't playing a funny role he was playing well, he's like, a great a actor he can do he's anything. a very good he actor. anything i miss i miss him a lot. oh me too but he uh but yeah he was one of those guys who i think he just had too much fun doing the fun roles if they were to come out with another naked gun yeah. who would be frank drebin that's a brilliant question. I haven't. I don't know. Think about you, it. Everybody out there, who do you yeah. think would be the new Frank Drebin? Because. Ooh. Like he's like, he's a little slapsticky. You want a little old. You got to. I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer for that off the top of my head. And he took it so seriously. Like his lines. Yeah. When he t- <laughs> that's what made it so, so funny. Dead. And that's why he did like, that's why he was brilliant in airplane and all that. He was Look at the man. people are still, he just shot the bartender and some other guy and everybody's yeah. still just chill. And it happens all the time. Well, here. There's a good band on. What are you going to yes. do? <laughs> I paid a uh, cover charge. Man, like, oh my God, was that a bad guy? Or just was like, didn't I'm like that guy's tie. Unclear. Wow. <laughs> like, just- that's like that whole thing with Han where like, did he shoot the guy first? Who gives a fuck whether he shot the guy first? Yeah. He's supposed to be a badass. Yeah. And he shot the guy. Big fucking yeah. deal. Yeah. The guy was a scumbag. He shot him. Or as they add in the uh, Disney version, they added just one extra shot for some yeah. reason. Well, because, because the guy pulls his gun first no, and then he shoots him. Well, no, it, no, it's not even that. So what happens is in the, so the original version, Han shoots first. Then they change, then George Lucas changed it to Greedo shooting first. Right. Then Disney changed it. So it's a little bit closer. Like they both, like they were both intending to fire the whole time. Kind right. of thing, so it's not like so it's not one person reacting. Well, to no, another. because he knew. Yeah, the, and the, my idea is that he knew the guy's gonna shoot him. Yeah, and I so think he's that like, their boom. Their editing of it made it seem that way because in George Lucas's version, Greedo fires and his head moves very poorly. By the way, right, and his head goes like this, like it's almost like they just remove it. <laughs> it goes over here, and then that he, pan and scan, and then he fires, so it's more reaction. Right. right. Whereas he's this like, one, they they <laughs> did an edit, so it looks like they shoot each other like near the same time like they were both planning on doing it anyways but right before that shot it goes to just to one extra shot of Greedo's face and he goes McClunky and then it and then that shot happens and it's just like McClunky like where did this I come fucked from? your mother that's what McClunky means that probably he's like you fucking asshole you're dead I don't even know who my mother is <laughs> yeah, <he's- laughs> didn't you watch Dad? Solo Dad. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great twist Greedo's his dad I like that. Go, I know you've been tortured a lot, but I have too, and I'm older, so you go deal with it. Has he been shot? No, well, I think he, that, they Ryan. were torturing him. Eat your heart out, Tom Cruise. They were torturing him in the chair. You talking to yourself? Or yeah. Who's he talking to? Here? General McAllister's the name of his penis. <laughs> <laughs> He's too old for that shit. <laughs> 
Oh my god, like Mel's catching up. He's running like 75 miles an hour right now because it's the states, it's not KMs. Look, he is too. He's got to be running yeah. 40. Catch oh, yeah. up to him. Look at that. So I would literally now need a stunt guy to do that for me. I can't. No. I can't run like that. Fuck. I haven't been able to. Like, Jesus you know, well, you know, my knees have been screwed since like grade eight. So like, I, I, there's no getting out of that for me. It's a good one, man. This movie holds up. It's good. Yeah. It was funny because uh, Carrie asked me, like, I guess there was a possibility that softball might come back this year. And there's uh, some people who are trying to get a team together. And she was asking if I was interested. I'm like, I can't lift my left arm over my head. What just am I have supposed a, to do? Just have, like, a, you'll have a, 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 a pinch, pinch hitter. Yeah. A pinch runner. A pinch batter. A pinch outfielder. Yeah, a pinch outfielder. Because uh, that was the other part, too, is, like, I, like if the team I was going to be on, there's no way I wasn't going to be outfield. And I, was, I, the first time I ever tore my rotator cuff was playing baseball because, like, my arm's only so strong. My shoulder's so, been hurting me since going back to the gym. I got to watch out. Mm-hmm. Like I've I've torn both rotator cuffs, one of them twice, and I've had bursitis. Nice. So I'm done with shoulder. Oh yeah, stuff. the bursitis is no. Ee, that's not fun. Yeah. But rigs has got to be coming, man. We can't just have yeah. Riggs doing all the shit here. I know. They didn't even kidnap anybody in his family. I know, right? Yeah. But oh, he's he having getting... the time of his life. Yeah. Fuck! Yeah. It must be so fun to be a bad guy. Yeah. Fuck! It must like, be no so con, fun to just, just kill people. It must like, be so a. fun to just shoot a movie like uh, this. Like. We should go to a gun range. Yeah. Yeah, like shooting guns. I've never been. I've I've never really been interested. I don't care. It's, yeah, I just think it's cool. It's not that I wouldn't. It's just that I've never. <laughs> He's like, I'm not even after you. I know. He yeah, and he also has a machine area. gun there with him, too. Yeah, oh, that's literally just, this is That the was such I a cool scene, because you know somebody's going to be like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're late getting home. Of course I'm late getting home. There was a firefight <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> Again? Yeah. Uh-oh. See, he's like diehard barefoot, because they were torturing him. Oh, he's still got some bad guys to deal with here. Oh. You got that fucking right, oh. buddy. Fuck that shit. Bam. Good stuff. He just did Woo! it. He just did a two face where he kills the driver instead of the other guy. Oh, he'll get his cars. Like, really, when you look at cars today and you look at what cars used to be, then cars sucked. When? Like, look at these. Old no, they did boxes. not. That's when they made cars for real. Well, I mean, they were strong. You could like, run into tough. like 15 kids. You didn't even know you hit them until the police showed yeah. up at your house two days later. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. They were like, oh. they were of a strong metal and stuff I missed like the very moment the bus hit the car because you're being talking crazy yeah. over there and I was looking well, at you. No, but the truth is, though, even though those cars were made of a stronger material, you were less safe in them. You get hit by, you get hit by something. It was like you... F- took that entire <gasps> impact cars are built to crumple now because then you won't feel it oh my god look he's mixing his grenades in with his uh, cocaine oh man that's exactly how reese peanut butter cup was born <laughs> you got your chocolate and my peanut butter you got my grenade and my cocaine <laughs> Boom. oh fuck yeah i love all the over the head uh the like over the street christmas decorations going on oh, oh. Man. My buddy, and I'm I'm not opposed, but he he is against having explosions, actual explosions in movies now, because of the environment and this okay. and that. And I'm like, man, like, yeah, fuck, it's like I would get rid of everything just to have explosions. It, you know what? If I yeah. if it was my rule, I'd be like, nobody drives cars now. You know why? Because we have explosions in movies. And they'd be yeah. like, oh fuck, I can't go to work. I'm like, I don't give a shit. It depends on what you but like. <clears throat> it really depends on what you're using and stuff for the environment to be <laughs> negative. Yeah, <laughs> for the uh, environment to be negatively impacted, though, too. So I mean, there's that to consider, and how long something's burning because it's what's burning into the atmosphere then, and stuff like that. So that becomes a problem. Then but. I thought. It would be very hypocritical of them, but, you know, whatever. Who, the, that's what the government does. I was going to say, they ban explosions in movies, right? Yeah. And they still have cars running, which is a fucking joke. But, okay, so they ban the explosions. Then we, well, mm-hmm. pff, you you'd have me? to get the money, okay. build a huge, gigantic fucking warehouse yeah. where your whole business is blowing shit up for movies. Yeah, just make A huge see. fan with a big filter and all, you know, like at a factory, and that's yeah. all you did was film all of Hollywood's explosions. 
I'm so on fucking a be the best. You just have like you, you're ha- you're getting so much friggin' info sent to your house or sent to your like job that we would definitely die doing that job. Like eventually, like we'd be sitting there and it's like, he's like, Todd, look at me. I'm smoking. I'm like just pretending I'm smoking and I've got a lit cigarette and I'm going like this. And you're like, Joe, you're awful close to the end. So I'm like, Ew, I'm Todd. You're yeah. awful close to the end. <laughs> they were both dead. And then they, but the good news is they got that on film and they used it. Like the Frank next- Grimes, <laughs> eh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, that. Ooh, look at me. I'm Todd. I'm smoking. Ooh, I'm so close <laughs> to the explosive. I'm like, Joe, please, no. You're yeah. really close, actually. Oh, ooh. Ooh, boom. Yeah. <laughs> no, you just make, seriously, no. Joe, you're really close. You over make there. it out alive, you're really, and you're like, you're, you're telling the cops, you're like, I don't understand. He's never done an impression of me smoking before, yeah, like ever. <laughs> Ooh, that gives you a real sign of the times and apartheid. Oh, I was just gonna things. say that. I was like, did he shoot at that sticker? Mm-hmm. I saw the funniest thing today. Somebody was defending uh, the crown. Over like the uh, accusations of racism, which duh, um, but, I know, right? Well, how is that like? Uh, how is that news? Yeah, like come but, on. Uh, but they were sitting there and they were like, "I'll have you know that m- most of the uh, most of the Queen's Commonwealths, uh, like the uh, you know places where England holds dominion, happen to be like Indian and African countries." And we're like, "Are you not getting the point of that?" <laughs> Do you think that they came to the England willingly and right, said, hey, exactly. please? Yeah. You know, yeah, I'll totally come with you. You know what I think is a good idea? Because the boat rules. Just put yeah. me up. Well, no, but this was, my arms but this was more England just going to them and taking over their land. Right. Like, it was just As they always like, love to do. Because they did that in India. They did that in uh, South Africa and a bunch of other places. Oh, this is the best. This is my favorite because they they could have arrested him. He could have oh, yeah, shot done. him. Yeah, like, it's, like it's, they've got him. He's like, hey, have you heard of the UFC? Nope, it doesn't exist yet. Me either. Let's have a fight. Fucking right. The first Ma- the- He's like, wait, wait, you got to back him and get into the uh, the reign of the... Yeah. So anyways, so to talk about this, so Richard Donner wanted this fight sequence to be a unique one. They actually shot it over four days of night shoots. Um, they had... What are the styles? They used Wing Chun, Capoeira, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, to like they combine those styles to create like something that because it's not just straight up karate it's not like that right doing, like, it's kind whatever. of like a hybrid exactly right and so they wanted it to look different than anything else and they got rory and gracie uh one of the famed gracie jiu-jitsu, uh, jiu-jitsu families to uh come in and be involved in this oh and there's also a part it was funny it's called jailhouse rock Oof is one of the other martial arts styles. Really? It's like it's like a close quarter fighting jailhouse rock. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Just let him fight yeah. him. Why wouldn't they just open like they're Who's far with the cape? Apart. Well, here's why would they're far enough apart. Why wouldn't they just have opened fire on the guy? They're I like, like how he killed a bunch of cops. Yeah, like <laughs> I like I like how you're like it's the 4 days of filming and they're really not showing a lot of pulled back camera like fighting yeah. stuff they're like this is awful just yeah. throw a couple of punches we'll put change the camera around yeah they're just thinking random shit up come on rings what was that move oh, oh. oh no my lights this is like every christmas at my house <laughs> the uncles are fighting it's always it's raining like a monster <laughs> yes. it like oh okay it's not raining it's a fucking See, even when yeah, I did my research, the, it said they was in a rainstorm, but no, that's a freaking uh, fire hydrant. hydrant. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. He's got to back up. He's like, Nightstick. okay, we got to get into the rain here. Nightstick doesn't beat giant pole. Yes, it does. I, <laughs> you're watching it happen. Oh, yeah, you're right. Look at him spin that thing around like a champ. Hey, I used to have Tonfa, which are those uh, in karate. Oh, that's I tra- right. I trained with them. I was actually pretty decent with them. I can never remember yeah. the katas. Yeah. I did. Oh, oh, they're taking this now. Yeah. I'm sure they would allow this, eh? Yeah, I know, right? This is the yeah. 80s for you. If Mr. Joshua was black, we'd be seeing a much different end to this movie. <laughs> if they both would, of them, they'd be like, whatever, just kill them both. It would be, it would literally have just been a pile of cops around him just firing down, going, stop resisting, stop <laughs> resisting. Yeah, exactly. He's just juice. He's just like water all oh, over the Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
What if now here's the thing? He though. kills him. No, but I'm like, just, like Gary Busey kills Murdoch. He's like, just yeah. let him. Well, it's my thing. Like for or Riggs, whatever for, his name for is. Gary Busey's character, for Mr. Joshua, what is his logic here? Does he think, oh, I'm going to win. If I win, they're going to let they're me gonna walk let you away. Go. No, it's just another fight he can win. Yeah. Might as well go down fighting. Oh, it's a gauntlet. He's like, now I take oh, on this cop. And there you go. Triangle yeah, choke. There you go. Or not a, yeah. I remember seeing this after like watching UFC and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, he was doing a triangle choke before oh, that was yeah. a thing. Like I don't Good even move. Think, I don't even think I saw Royce Gracie doing a uh, friggin' triangle choke. It, we gotta watch those old UFCs again. The Gracie train. The great like. Remember when we promised that's the only way we would travel? We did for a while. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think high school we did more than one Gracie train from class to class. <laughs> he let him live. See, he's learning. Yeah. He's going to be like, so you had to break his neck. You were surrounded by 50 cops, had to break his neck. Yeah. No, that'd be the best if he's like, you let him live. And he's like, I did. Oh, crap. I thought he was dead. He's like, he's like, I had must so be much, losing my touch. I had so much water in my eyes. I yeah. thought he was dead. Must be getting too old for this shit. Oh, well, shit. Here's the diehard ending. Yeah. Uh, never I, took his boat in the job. Boat. That was a weird shot. Like just the slow mo. And then I thought of, like, Murdoch jittery. shot him. He did as well. They both did. Oh, lame. It should have just been uh, Murdoch. It looks like he's inside him right there. The Shannon jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that should have been, been both. It would have been, he should have passed out into his arms. Yeah. And then he's like, he's good. And then so Murdoch's got to kill him. Yeah. You know what? It would, yeah. It would have I think that would have been good. Look at that weird double turn thing. Yeah. Look at the chin on him. You know what? My favorite scene in any of the Lethal Weapon movies is at this grave site in Lethal Weapon 4. There's a scene where he's sitting down there. He's basically contemplating whether or not it's okay for him to ask uh, you know, Renee, Renee Russo, Russo, Russo to marry yeah. him. And then... Um, Leo Getz shows up behind him. Very serious scene, and he just comes up and he's like, when I was a little kid, I had this frog. And he tells this story about this frog, and then he's like, and he died. And he's like, and I got another pet or something like that. And he's like, I didn't love it more. I just loved it different. He's like, I just thought that might be right relevant right now. <laughs> right and then he just kind of looked and it's like but he had like this like emotion of like I, like went back to being a little kid with his right dad pet. i was like it was so good it was just such this like like emotional like like not over emotional but just this raw scene it was so good yeah and like to get the new frog doesn't mean i don't love the old frog any less or and then but the best part of that scene was right after that he finds out that renee russo's having her baby and he gives him a hug and then there's this little moment, or no, it's right before they go in the hospital. He gives him a hug, and then he gives him this like like excited little because it's the first time he's really ex received love right. from these guys. And he gives him a hug of this kind of little pat, and like you see like this happy <laughs> puppy in him, and it just makes me want to cry. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, get in there, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Somebody's got to come out. Mm -hmm. You saved my life multiple times, Rings. You can have my daughter tonight. <laughs> Come on now. Get the fuck in there. There you go. Rings. <laughs> Rings. You used to do that all the time. It made me laugh so goddamn hard. <laughs> oh, That's his right. Sucks. His wife sucks at the cook at the cooking room. Sure. <laughs> what? I, I can't get over what a goddamn <laughs> beautiful man he was. Oh yeah, yeah, there he is. He whistles really well too. I know we're praising. He's Mel him Gibson. Lot, come on, yeah. Oh, I like that he brought his doggy. In a lot of movies, they forget about that kind of thing, yeah. right? Like. I meant to talk about Mel Gibson, just some of the stuff that he had coming up lately. Um, he's got uh, some uh, movies. He's got one called Last Looks coming up. Um, Panama, Dangerous. This is and, Mel Gibson. Yeah, an agent game. The Last Looks, Looks one sounds kind of good. I think it's got something. It's got something to do with Charlie Hunnam's in it, 
And, like, he's, like, a retired cop who goes to, like, into the woods and just kind of, like, wants to live off the grid. And some other cop, like, finds him and wants him to help, like, investigate a murder and stuff. I don't know. It was pretty good. There was some pretty good cast. I just saw with him it was called Boss Level. Yes. And he was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And what's-her-name was in it. And I'm sure it was this weird... um, Naomi Watts was in it for just yes. briefly. And there's a scene where they share a scene yeah. and I'm sure they're not in the same room together. Yeah. It's like the weirdest. It's like so blatant. You know what I mean? Like she's on the couch. He's behind her. They never see. They're never yeah. like in the same frame. They, I wonder yeah. if she was like, I don't want to be in the room with this guy. I wonder why. Maybe it was it, a scheduling thing. It could very well be a scheduling thing too. Yeah. I was just blown away. I'm like, really? Frank Grillo starring in movies now. Like, yeah. And it's not the first one either. No. I was like, huh. All right. Good for you. I don't think he's going to last very long, to be honest no. with you. He's not really... He's riding off his... his he's the, yeah, off the crossbones cross thing. I don't think he's really the best actor or anything. I, I no. don't really... Nah. No. He would have made, in his own way, a good Punisher. Yeah, you know, I don't like... I love John Berenthal, and yes. I keep seeing him in movies. Yeah. And I'm like, he's so good, but I do not like his Punisher yeah. at all. I didn't mind his Punisher. I hate that rage. Oh, yeah. Every day, he's like, oh my God! Ah! I'm just like, yeah. oh my God, like... I get could, over it. If Mel Gibson can get over it in yeah. one movie, Frank Castle, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. I liked the, like, there's times when he used it, but like when he was in a lot of pain and you kind of like, he draws from it to right. kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. get up and keep going. I was like, I get that shit, but that cat is smiling right now at how much you're petting it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she got gotten really cuddly over the years. And I think it's only because now that Carrie's allergic to her, she's now <laughs> de- so down. Literally the one day she fought with me to like, she got on Carrie's lap and I'm trying to get her off. But like, if you try and like push her off, yeah. she's going to like, like claw in. And she's I don't like, screw you. You love me now. She's and, like, you will love me now. And she was really just like digging down as hard as she could. <laughs> like, I'm not going anywhere. She's like, not, until, not until this one dies. And I'm trying to get, <laughs> I was trying to get over to me so I could pet her. Right. So she would be getting what she wanted, but she'd be off my wife. Who's uh, of course dying. not. Nope. Exactly. And she's like, no, nope. nope. It was it's like, just my, like a cat man. It was like my cat zoomer when I lived at home and I'd have homework and she's like, Oh, I'm going to lay down. And exactly. That's now. exactly it. That's but why you could I lay got rid of her. anywhere, yeah. anywhere. Well, and that was my but point right here. here. Cause she was trying to lay on the ground. Yeah, this computer. is the only place you want to be. Of course. Right. Uh, Fucking cats. All right, guys, that's it for this. Holy one. shit. Those are quick credits. It's the eighties. Cause there's not like yeah. uh 45 minutes of like dudes working in the fucking clickety clack. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. So that's it for this week. Uh, find us at miscastcommentary.com. Email us podcast at miscastcommentary.com. Find us on Twitter at miscast podcast. I'm at miscast Joe. Todd's at miscast Todd. Uh, miscast commentary is our at for the Instagrams. And, uh, all those other good places. Join our Discord. The good stuff. You'll hear from us next week. Mini episode. Coming attractions episode. Uh, where we announce that next movie we've been teasing way too much. Well, I've been teasing way too much <laughs> during this episode. Because I just can't not talk about things I know. <laughs> That's basically the long and short of it. It's just like, I know about that. Let's let's hear me talk for ten minutes. Alright, so until then, go. That's it for us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. Executive producer, Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production.